it's a new it's a new day it's a brand new dawn it's a new episode of the procrastinators podcast here on the procrastinators podcast.com not on youtube because youtube just keeps lying they just keep lying to us they hate us we're being oppressed uh uh we are being canceled we've been canceled this is cancel culture we've been cancel culture right now by youtube yeah. they don't want us on their platform we've been deplatformed and for what ben, for being based we're, we're constantly, all the time we are constantly punished on all sides for doing our job too well we mm, are called agreed the procrastinators we are mm-hmm. professional procrastinators yeah and yet right we're constantly getting shit from our audience for procrastinating we're constantly getting shit <laughs> from youtube for i don't for know getting hacked b- being on youtube yeah which is again yeah. our job yeah we're just trying to do our uh, fucking job we're just getting shit on all the time everyone say everyone says oh ben where's slime and punishment ben where's the finale where's the new endless war update when's the new season starting where's vapors 2 where's where's the, my what, parts for the rap where's the kuz omega where, kickstarter where, where's where's where's, where's uh, the, the the radcon light novel Rad, where's yeah Rad, the, road to radcon for part five yeah. um, where's the ova where's the dojin where's the where's the um, anything where's where'd my thirty four thousand dollars go they cry and weep yeah. and gnash their teeth you know the problem. Well, the problem with the theory <laughs> of the the thirty four thousand dollars is that it doesn't feel real yet because none of us have gotten any of the money. No. So it's uh, presumably like, Nate is just like holding it in like an offshore Swiss bank account. Yeah. Um, it is. It is. It is like it is like earmarked to be spent on stuff to be spent on like there were too many and, and none of us are getting any of it until we've yeah, like done all there's the, too much uh, post-production cost and some of us haven't even are some of us are so lazy we haven't even submitted our receipts from radcon yet uh, uh or maybe only uh, one of us is that lazy uh i that was the first thing i did yeah I'm, mine, were, mine was mostly for food and stuff i'm really bad about that kind of shit uh i mean be, but I, I i'm good at like <laughs> The way I've been filing my been, taxes, I don't. I don't think I've been reimbursed. I, I'm not sure if I've been reimbursed for like food. I hope so. Ben, uh, yeah. Have you even had to file taxes in the last like few years? Yeah, yeah. Of course, everybody does. No, I've done my taxes every year, and in, mm. in fact, I was doing my taxes uh, like two days ago, and I realized that you can just apply for an extension and get it extended to like October, mm-hmm. and I did. And they gave me the extension in like immediately, mm. and so now I don't have to do them until October. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Um, do you have to do like? Do you end up owing the government money or like? Oh yes, yes. Because so... as as a self employed person, you know, yeah. if you work for an employer, a lot of times they withhold your taxes right. anyway, and then sometimes you get a, re- a rebate. But you, for me, nothing gets withheld. So yeah, but I do always you get owe. anything back like from being low I think, income um there is a there are certain uh, uh, the uh, self-employment it's is rough for taxes yeah. there is Tell there are that. um yeah there are like low in there are limits like there is a certain like allowance of a few thousand dollars I, I think it's up to like maybe like two or three or four thousand dollars where basically that much of your income is is like I think it's two thousand something is not counted. So like the first mm-hmm. amount, it's like you don't get taxed on that. But after that, there is like a certain amount, and I am above that, so I do get you know taxed normally yeah. on on everything beyond that that amount. And actually, if we're talking about taxes, and I don't mind the I mean I don't know what the audience thinks about tax talk. Personally, I don't find it boring. Um, but I was um, I was I'm doing it. Interested because you know <laughs> I have so, uh, so, tax problems. Last year, you know, I did the Vapors 2 Kickstarter uh, and I and I got the money from it, but I didn't I didn't have the book ready. Incidentally, I have the book ready now and I'm going to be getting it printed like this week. Like the time has, has come. Uh, it's a miracle. But so I didn't I didn't spend it last year. So theoretically, I would have had to pay taxes on the entire amount, even though, you know, a lot of it has to go towards production. And I was sweating that I'm like, I'm going to get overtaxed on this shit. But it turns out there is something called the accrual method of accounting, which mm-hmm. 
long story short, is basically just you checking a box that says, I want to count my later expenses for earlier, please. <laughs> and if you just say you're using the accrual method, you are allowed to consider future expenses incurred by a previous thing, it, it, transaction, as though they occurred at the moment they were incurred, though they occurred when they were incurred rather than when you actually paid them. So I can do that. And I, so I'm glad I was able to delay paying my taxes because now n I don't have to do it until October. So by then I will have, you know, printed the books, gotten, done all the rewards and stuff, paid for the shipping and all, which is probably going to be another thousand dollars or so. So I'll be able to mark all that as yeah, expenses the, 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 off the of money, that Kickstarter money. The money behind all this stuff is the, the way it moves is so much more complex than people think about because it's like you see like okay well they just got this money and then they used it for this thing and it's like yeah but yeah. like you spend it incrementally over the course of the entire creation of the thing so it's like you have yeah. this money yes but this money is for this thing and it continues mm -hmm. to be for this thing and it's, it's not it's not your money until yeah. i mean though it's not it yeah this is true for vapors it's true for the pcp radcon is probably true for everything right. it's not your money and, or it shouldn't be your money until you like, have fully done everything you were going to do with it. And then you can be like, okay, okay, I can keep whatever's left over. At the same That's time, the though, profit. like, if you do incur personal cost, like, mm. to, like, like, if, let's say that you are in a situation where, like, you, you have, like, a budget for something mm -hmm. in order to realize its creation... For, like, a thing that got crowdfunded. And then maybe. let's say that, like, you yeah. get, like, uh, like you break a leg or something, and you have mm -hmm. no means by which to pay for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fixing your leg, but you also cannot complete the project until the leg is fixed. That it's like, mm -hmm. in that sense, the money it would be going towards the project if it was used to fix your leg, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Well, that's kind of like... That's sort of like borrowing against yourself. Do you know what right. I mean? You sort you sure you might find yourself in an emergency situation needing that money for something yeah. other than what you know, a, a a new expense, right? right? That wasn't accounted for, and then it's like, well, I need to spend the money on that. I right. will then have less money for the things that I expected to pay for. But what else yeah. can I do? Sure. I mean, it, it kind up. of it puts you in a a no win situation where. Either you can say, okay, well, this money is exclusively for this project. I will not use any of, I will not dip into this funding to fix my leg. However, in order, if that is the case, then in order to fix my leg, I will have to either incur a separate debt <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. or I will have to, like, you know, have the, somehow work hard enough to have the money to just pay for it, you know, without having to incur debt. Uh, either you're way, you're saddling yourself with, more mm. work than the thing that you're supposed to do, which in itself will postpone the thing that you're supposed to do. So either you're postponing it because you're not using the money to fix yourself or you use the money to fix yourself. The project assumably can get, you know, further along. However, it also now requires more funding as some of the funding was diverted to emergency relief, you know? When, when you're, when you're, when you're like indie crowdfunded, Going over budget just means that you're paying for it. <laughs> so yeah. if like if something happens and you end up over budget, that's just out of your pocket. <laughs> right. And and the, yeah. the, the onus always falls on you as a business person to have made a good decision about mm. knowing how much money you needed. And the fact of the matter is that indeed people have no fucking concept of how much money will be needed in most situations. Like no. and <clears throat> There's no, like, you'll go over budget every time. Well, there's not, there's like, an really amount really there's an amount that you know estimates. to account for, and then there's things that you yeah. just will not know to account for until the time comes. Either in terms of time invest, like for us on like Radcon Four, it wasn't we we didn't fuck up on the money end of things. We fucked up on the time end of things, like just mm. overloading an amount of things that we thought we could get do get done in a shorter amount of time than we could. You know. Um, a little bit, a little bit. And and even so, like, I mean, some of the things are things that, you know, I don't think anybody expected to be done quickly, like the OVA, like, 
obviously the reason that's in the works is that there's a fucking animation being made for it. Like, it's not it's not because of us. It's because that there, is, it's a I big mean, project I mean, that's in other people's hands, you know. Well, it it's yeah, on the one hand, it's a big project that's in other people's hands. On the other hand, we have never done a thing like that before. Right. So we kind of had to, like, discuss, like, how are we going to go about doing this? Yeah. And then, like, try and figure I, out, I would like, think that would be expected, what's the best though. way. Like, people know yeah. we have not made it hit a patient before, you know. But, like, in terms of other things where it's, like, okay, like, the diss track, like, the, the exact nature of how we were going to do it, like, we didn't have a proper microphone set up to get like the song done right at Radcon. Mm. We got a demo version done that we could record the music video against, but like mm -hmm. there was not enough time to, you know, come back and record a proper studio version on top of everything else that was going on. And so in the aftermath of that, it's like, okay, well now everybody has to go and find time on their own to, you know, record for this thing. And right. the, the, the work wasn't over at that point. Exactly. The work was not all done within the time that was allotted for the work to be done. And then the question And then, like you, like, you and Tom also had to do, you know, like shipping and, and product, uh, uh, you know, fulfillment, right? Making shirts and posters. And, uh, and well, Tom did. I mean, stuff. all I had to do was mail him the posters, which I did like, oh, okay. a week ago. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 sure. But yeah. So, I mean, for Tom especially. But I mean, you know, we had, we had a portion of the budget earmarked to like cover. Yeah. The estimate, the estimate, like I got paid for, for drawing the poster and, you know, he's getting paid for like the, the, the chipping and the, and the, the printing, the, the stuff. Yeah. Um, yes. It's very involved and it has been like, like Radcon 4, the event lasted, you know, was it 10 days? Yeah. Uh, but like in a very real sense, it's still, it's still going on. Like it's still in right. the process of happening and unfolding. Well, that's how it in was the, for all of them. I mean, like with Radcon, yeah, Radcon 2, 3 it took so long. Took a year. All of them. Radcon 3 took, took a year <laughs> for all the content to come out. Mm -hmm. I was still working on 10 paces and draw a year later. <laughs> mm. I think Plebe and the Weeb took like a, like a whole year for the whole season to come out. What the hell are you mm. stirring around? Mm. I'm glad you asked, did you? <clears throat> oh God. Um, this is this is uh this is coffee and this is a half a pint half a pint of a uh, mint chocolate chip keto ice cream uh, that like, I mixed into uh, it. Ah yes, and I'm, drink I'm glad you noticed <laughs> that I was loudly stirring this cup so that you would ask me what was in it. No, I'm I'm stirring it because I want to drink its contents because they're delicious. But I'm very excited uh, by this uh, by this new recipe that I've started. Describe it. To uh, you. Uh, it uh, that that's it. It's just. It, it's a it's a mason jar full of coffee that I dumped half a pint of low carb mint chocolate chip ice cream into, mm. and mixed it up, <laughs> and I'm drinking it. Good. Oh, and I put Good. some stevia in there too. I guess I was thinking, what's the word? There's a word for when you put ice cream in coffee. It might be macchiato, but I'm not uh, sure. A macchiato. So I think this is a keto oh. a keto macchiato. A keto macchiato. <laughs> keto, a maki a macchito ado. Uh yes, pat patent pending. How does it feel <sighs> to be the most like, you're like you're like, you're like a budget version of an insufferable hipster. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's like <laughs> I appreciate that. That's like what makes it. It's it's like like you would just be like a douchebag, but the fact that you're doing mm. it all on your own gumption, like you made it entirely by yourself, is so respectable that it's like wow, he's really putting effort <laughs> into his fucking like. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean, sure, like, I started, um, I started ordering out food, like, like, the like, two weeks ago, I went on a kick where I would order food all the time, Yeah. and, like, but then I realized, like, oh my god, like, with delivery, fucking food, like, with delivery fees, and, like, you gotta tip your fucking delivery guy now, you I, through DoorDash or whatever, I actually and it's, do... like, it's, like, it's, like, 25 fucking dollars to get a burger. I, I like, actually Jesus pay Christ. for the, the Grubhub Plus and DoorDash premium because of the fact mm. that I have been ordering so much that it is legitimately benefits me, especially because with Grubhub Plus... Every time you spend like a hundred bucks or so, they give you like a ten dollar rebate or whatever. So, it's like, it, it's definitely a system that entraps you. It's like if you can, yeah, if you can afford to be in the system, then it is more affordable than trying to like just order from it regularly, you know. But like, yeah, but you'd have to order enough 
for it to pay off. And then at that point, you're spending a lot on eating out, and you shouldn't be. But well, that's where that, I'm yeah, at. that's what I did. That's what I did with Instacart, which is like the grocery delivery service. You, they would normally charge a fee per delivery, but if you do their their like premium program, yeah. you know, delivery is free for like a one time yearly fee. And I calculated it out, and it was like way cheaper to just pay the yearly fee. Yeah. Or it would have been, except that then I stopped using it because the pandemic hit. Right. Uh, although I might go back to using it. It's uh, funny at that some you point. stopped when the pandemic hit because I feel like a lot well, of people Well, they they stopped. De- well, oh, okay. there's two. Well, they stopped delivering for a while. Um. So with the, and you that was bad. But then they pay for they, that. They, they should fucking rebate you that period of time. Like. It, it was. Class it was actually a pretty lawsuit. brief. It was actually a pretty brief period of time. I'm not that upset about it, but. Even on top of that, they don't, they don't take uh they don't take EBT, um, mm. which seems like a big oversight. Even Amazon, Amazon started taking EBT recently, which mm. is like a real game changer. <clears throat> um, so like since since Instacart stop doesn't take EBT, and since um you know I don't want to fucking take public transit to like. Wegmans or something which is cheaper I've just been shopping for food at Whole Foods and like yes I know that it is more expensive to buy food from Whole Foods but they t- it's close to me so I don't have to put myself in contact right. with people and they take EBT so I can spend my fucking government monopoly money on it haha <laughs> suckers um, it's great <laughs> amazing. Uh, it's, it's, it is amazing it's uh, amazing uh, but, like, uh, but god ordering out ordering out Gro- groceries, you know, got to do it. You know, it's a necessary expense. One must, one must. Ordering out, I, I have like, I have to stop this. I don't care how good boneless buffalo wings from Wings Over are. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot maintain I mean, this lifestyle. It's, it's, it's especially hard if I, if here. I were to, like, I, I, I could technically afford it, but if I keep doing this, I'm gonna find myself at the end of next year getting hit with that fucking tax and I'll be like, oh shit, I forgot. Oh shit, I forgot. I'm a self-employed peon and I owe like fucking half my fucking <laughs> money that I made to the government and now I don't have it because I spent it on five guys. Ben, how much variety is there in the stuff that you order? Because that's a big part of why I order so much is that like I just like to eat tons of different kinds of food. So it's like, you know. Um, in the stuff that I order... Uh, well, I don't do it very often. I ordered, I ordered Indian food. No, no, it was Greek food like a month ago and I didn't like it that much and I didn't think it was worth the money. So I didn't order for a while. And then someone in my house ordered buffalo wings and I was like, yeah, I'll get in on that. And they were so good that I had like had to get some more. So I ordered a bunch more over the next week. So I guess there's not that much. I guess there's not that much variety. I, yeah. I'll order food if like I get like a particular thing that I'm like, I want some of this. Even, I must even have just this. Just hearing you describe the way that you ate Greek food made me realize mm. something because I, I think that most most Americans they like they just eat American food mm-hmm. like almost exclusively and then like once a month or so are like oh i'll mix it up i'll like have some mexican or like some chinese or like (laughs) some thai food if i'm fucking really feeling freaky and like Mm. this is very strange to me because like i mean when i was growing up i ate like nothing but tv dinners and bullshit and like my mom became a vegetarian in like 2001 and her cooking just degraded over time because she doesn't eat what she's (laughs) cooking so she doesn't give a fuck Mm, you know right so like and nobody else in the house could cook so imagine being a vegetarian mom and cooking for your non-vegetarian family i don't blame her at all it it, because you know i mean it's just a hassle and and you know nobody really appreciates it or helps out i respect it i respect it that you would be like principled enough to be like i want to make the world a better place i think being a vegetarian is a good way to do that yeah but i don't believe in imposing my values on others so i'm still gonna cook i'm so i'm still still gonna gonna cook cook meat that i don't believe in right yeah but yeah you know if you're not eating the food it's really hard to make it good you know and like yeah so my mom has become a better chef apparently now that she and my dad are both vegan and she could just make vegan dishes because obviously yeah. it's to their palate i, I don't mm-hmm. like almost any vegan food so uh it's i have a i have a roommate me. who is a, a loose vegetarian and i don't know if, i don't think i don't think 
I don't like the things he makes, and I but I don't think it's because it's vegetarian. I think he just undersalts everything. <laughs> I think that's his problem. Yeah. If he just fixed that, he'd be fine. I mean, it's always just a matter. Of, I mean, I used to not even eat like any kind of dish that did not have meat in it. It's like I did not even see the value of a dish without meat until mm. like May started cooking dishes that are like actually good. You know, like. Not to yeah. say that she often makes stuff with no meat in it necessarily or that that's my favorite shit, but it can be good, obviously. And, like, sure, you do, we don't need to eat anywhere close to as much meat as we do. You know, I think meat is good for you, for the human experience, yeah. but you don't have to eat it even every day, you know? No. Uh, to no, get no, To no. get the benefits necessary from it. But, like, uh, but nonetheless, I'm a big-time meat person. I like to eat a lot of fucking meat if i can um mm-hmm. but like same and I, I tend to favor like just getting a sandwich with just like no fucking lettuce on it or anything like that but like i in terms of flavor palette i'm interested in a huge variety of styles of preparing meat or you know uh, of putting it with other things and like so much of american food is just meat plus lettuce tomato onion and like Sure. Not that I'm not fine with those things, but I do not find that to be a very interesting flavor combination. I don't like lettuce very much. I'm not a big fan of tomato. I put, I put love onions. Curry. I put curry powder on my cauli- on my steamed. Well, more sautéed. It's kind of half steamed, half sautéed cauliflower. I put curry powder on it the other day. Yeah. Mwah. Mwah. That sounds good. And I sprinkled some mozzarella on top. It's like, I don't use curry powder very often, but this was like, oh, it's perfect. I, oh, it's beautiful. I tend to crave, like, I want to eat fucking onions and mushrooms and fucking peppers mm. and, like, <clears throat> you know, shit that would be in a curry or shit that would mm-hmm. be in a soup or something like that. But also stuff that would be on a sandwich sometimes. It's just like, I want to mix it up. I want to be eating different stuff every day so that I know I'm getting, like, all the different types of fucking nutrients, all the different types of immunities, you know. Uh, I want to mm. be fucking ready for any situation with through my, through my <laughs> body's fucking makeup. I want my body to have evolved to deal with all kinds of different things. You know what I mean? And so... Sure. So I try to mix it up. But, like, you know... Uh, it's just funny because most of what you actually can get in America is not, like, authentic cuisine from places. Like, like if you get Chinese food, almost all of them are the same unionized Chinese-American food – American idea of Chinese food. It's, it's like Tex-Mex. Yeah. But, like, it's, chi- it's like Chinese right. – it's like well, and it's funny because tex, tex it's funny because it's like Tex Mex, yeah. except that the Mexican restaurants are also like that in America. Where like they're mm. also like what we think of as like real Mexican food, i.e., not Taco Bell, like Mexican family restaurants are also like generally the same unionized like template idea, of, like American idea yeah. of a Mexican place where they're serving quesadillas, which are not even a Mexican invention. You know, like yeah. So I definitely add like a. I I've definitely been to like one or two like pretty authentic little like hole in the wall yeah. um um like like Mexican places like in California I, I went to one or two there was a the, a place near our, my, our house in Boston that was like it was like an expensive sort of like higher end place but it was like much more uh, like it was clearly Mexican food like like someone from mm. Mexico making Mexican food but like at a higher you know kind of class Mexican food so not necessarily mm. like street mexican food but like it was not the same menu as what would be at like a standard family restaurant you know and like there's a chinese restaurant in my town called jade villa that i highly recommend anybody who happens to be in virginia beach um it's Mm -hmm. like right by town center and they actually have two menus they have one that's like the standard american chinese menu and then they have the chinese menu where it's like frog legs jellyfish fucking uh you know all kinds of crazy shit that is awesome and St- is stinky the, tofu they do not have stinky tofu but we did oh, go to that damn. place that had it uh, <laughs> well actually they might maybe i just didn't i've never looked for it were, were, were you there were you there when econ got the stinky tofu no, but at it, the place in the, chinatown the story was told to me many times it's so bad yeah. <laughs> so disgusting i, I can't I heard believe the it tales. uh mm. econ insists it's good though so whatever no like that guy's a freak. 
Well, yeah. I'm at the end. I mean, I'm at the end. He's a, he's I've got a the chocolate chips left. As well, you know. Mm. A, cu- a cuck. Yeah. <laughs> Lol. Like, literally? Well, did you... Okay, uh, he was on... Oh, no. Do we want to get into this? I no, mean, this, go ahead. Is, I don't this care. This is public. He was on... Okay. He, he came on Glink's stream. Uh, do, you, do you know who Glink is? Ah, fuck that guy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you don't like that guy? Uh, well, Mm-mm. he was... Not even a little bit. He was doing a, str- a live stream, and Econ went on there. Econ is, is, is pals with him. Uh, and Gross. he 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 was asked by somebody um about his love of ntr porn you know mm. you know what ntr is right netter netterare yes yeah is that's like that's getting cucked right well it's it, there's three perspectives on it and okay. as econ put it he said that he is 30 he is spins 30% of the time in all three of the perspectives so he gets off on being any of the three people in the scenario which is to say Oh, sure, yeah. The cuck, the cuck, the wife, or the bull, yeah, right? Yeah, all three of them. He's into being all three, so... Oh, no. Oh, no, I can't I can't hear anything. Eli- Eliazar, Eliazar, cut this part. Okay, Hello? I'm back. You, you can, can you hear can, me? You can, you, can, you can roll another blunt if you want. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> no, I, I was... I okay, afraid. okay, but I, I'm back. So, so you mean, right, 30% bull, 30% cuck, 30% wife, right? That's what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Sure, I totally get it. I totally get it. Yeah. So you know, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned, uh, if you're thirty percent cuck, you're <laughs> that a cuck. Thirty percent yeah. cuck. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Any sure. percent cuck uh, is a cuck. It's like um, it's like it's like being white. You know, if any part, if you're at all not white, if you have even a right. drop of non-white, you're not white anymore, right? If you have even a drop of cuck, you're no longer a right. bull. <laughs> well, it's it's funny you say right. that because I think that goes both ways with race. I think that if you're mixed at all, you're just mixed, and like nobody will have you. You know? Oh boy! I mean, it's like, a big... like there, there's a sect of people who do nobody not want will to say, have you. Yeah. Th- th- there's a sect of people who do not want to say that Obama was the first black president because he is right because he's half white. Half white. So well, yeah. I mean that. I mean it's a big, big topic. We won't get into it all. We can't possibly yeah. cover it all. But like. Neither it of us is really in a position to have a strong opinion about it, I guess most, is what we're trying to say. I mean, most people say that Obama <laughs> was a black president, even though he is demonstrably half white. Yeah. So, but mo- yeah, mo- it's, it's kind of a fringe position to say he's not black, because like, he, like, he's black because he looks black. And like at the end of the day, when you get right down to it, that's what race is. Yeah. It's the you think like, you can well, make like a, you, you can claim some it. kind of genetic lineage and like yeah maybe but at the end of the day what you really mean by white is just that you look white and that's yeah. basically it you ben, know are you familiar with the rapper logic no okay logic presents one of the most interesting scenarios in my mind because so logic is is is, is half black half white i think yeah um and he raps a lot about being but being half and like not really fitting in with either crowd, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people who talk about how they 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 they're sick of hearing him talk about it. Or they're sick of him sort of like talking about that experience because of the fact that he doesn't really look black at all. And so Wait. it's like hard to mm-hmm. believe that he would have faced the same prejudice that they do. And when I think about that, I'm like, well, aren't you exhibiting right now the prejudice that he is speaking about in the mm, songs by yeah. saying so? But at the same time, so before I ever saw what Logic looked like, I he saw... He does look... I mean, I can, I can kind of see him up, it. You right? Okay, I can before I saw see what it, he looked like, though... But he looks, look up, he, looks, he looks pretty white. Look up what he looks like in Rick and Morty, though. This is really funny to me because I saw his appearance in Rick and Morty before I knew what he looked like and assumed that he looked like this. And that made uh, me think, uh, mm. like, oh, yeah, he looks like he's, like, mixed. He looks like he would be, um, like, considered a black guy. But it's just funny because they present him as looking, like, his... especially mixed, but he doesn't. He kind of looks way whiter than that in they, real life. They got his chin wrong. It's funny to me, like the thing that looks the most black about him is like his hair. He's his like yeah. kind of like curly hair. I mean, like, to his, me, they, they gave him like these big lips and like he just kind of has like, kind of has like normal. I, 
I oh, absolutely God, I'm being, believe. I'm being, I'm being Eurocentric when I say normal white guy lips. But you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I absolutely believe that, mm. like, Logic has experienced what he talks about because, sure. like, from my perspective as a white guy, I look at him and I think, well, he doesn't really look white enough to fit in with white guys. Like, I know that. You know? I think that I don't know if black guys probably... know that, but I know that. What, with him the way he looks in real life? Like, I, I think that a lot of black people think that he wouldn't be singled out because he looks too white. Because, okay, black people are very fixated on skin tone. Like, in my mm. experience in going to black school, black kids yeah. talk about each other as like, oh, that light-skinned guy, that dark-skinned guy, that yeah. mid-tone person, you know? They yeah. they pay a lot of attention because they, th they think that... Um, there's like a sliding scale of privilege based on literally how dark you are. And the funny thing is that yeah. in those communities, that is even more true because of the fact that people because perpetuate they the stereotypes. And, sure. uh, particularly yeah, yeah. African kids get get bullied a lot in African-American communities. Being, for being the darkest? Right, for being the darkest right. and for being just culturally different, you know? Right, Because uh, yeah. they're from Africa. Like, I'm talking about mm -hmm. literal, like, you know, kids who are from Africa who, like, come yeah. over and trying to adapt. But, like... Yeah, um, sure. but you know, and I saw all of this as myself an outsider at the school, but you know, I was literally like a white kid from the suburbs who just somehow ended up here, you know? So like, I didn't feel like I was, uh, I didn't feel like I was being singled out so much as just like, what the fuck is this person doing here? They have nothing to do with the infrastructure of what's going on here, you know? Um, <laughs> infrastructure. Yeah. But yeah, like, sure. I look at logic and I think like, if this kid went to an all black school, then they're going to treat him like a white kid. And if he went to an all white school, they're going to treat him like a mixed kid. I know that would be the case because I went to both and I've I, known kids who were mixed and I know how they're treated. You it's kind of it's kind of hard to tell. In some of these pictures, he looks completely white. And then in others, it's like, OK, I can kind of see it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. It's just that Might white people. Like, I, I guess what I think that. uh. Like, people who have, like, I think when you have a racial, like, when you are, when you are a minority race, you feel particularly like, there's nothing I could do about this, and I'm just mm -hmm. being shamed for, for who I am. But it's like, right. when you don't have that, they still find a way. Like, whatever is, whatever there well, is like, about you that is different or, or weird, you will be bullied for, you know? And it's yes, like of, the of severity course. of the bullying or like where it happens, where you can get away with what is different depending on who you are. But that's always the case. It's like you can always get away with being certain people in certain places and not in other places. And, you know, maybe being white, there's the like gives you far more places that you can feel secure. But that is also mm -hmm. under the circumstance that you are white and like normal, you know, you're like, yeah. And and you you'll, can, you'll, you you'll can definitely be bullied. You're definitely liable to be bullied for any any yeah. difference that you have from what's perceived as the this normal status quo. That's definitely like, true. I, I will say that for me, like I as a you know as somebody who as a child, you know, I was assigned male at birth, told people said I looked like a girl. I didn't like that people said that about me, but I did not sh attempt to change myself. I could mm -hmm. have though. And in my mind that was always like a choice I was making. It's like I could choose to fit into society, I just would be really depressed and I wouldn't want to. So if I can get away with living being like, you know, weird looking, then I'll just I'll just do it and like I'll put up with whatever the consequences are even if that means getting bullied or looked down on and like you know I I understand that that's not viable for everybody and I never I never put myself in dangerous situations or had to be put in dangerous situations because of my parents taking good care of me both being around uh having a house I didn't have to leave you know um mm -hmm. not having to involve myself in anything dangerous in order to survive which is something that both of my parents had to do like they both had to commit crimes to survive when they were teenagers you know uh Based. so like I understand like I understand both why people would do that and also like like I would never because I've been I've been in a situation where I didn't have to and I understand that life is just better when you don't have to commit crimes, you know? Um, <laughs> That's true. Yeah, definitely. So, like, 
you know, uh, when 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 the when the only when you just commit crimes for fun, it's like way better than when you than when you gotta oh, yeah. do it. Yeah, it's, it's better when it's when it's an unforced error, so to speak. Yeah. When you yeah. can choose the crimes that you want to commit because you feel secure in committing them or morally righteous in, in doing right. so. Uh, right. Not because, like, if I don't commit this crime, I won't be able to eat tonight, and I'm not sure how many nights I can live if I don't eat, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which definitely. is what poor people experience, especially teenagers, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, and, like, in in their minds, they will convince themselves that it's, like, normal because it's just, like, that's all they know It's like, yeah, what, well, crimes? Yeah, well, well, that level of life, that mm. level of like, because that's what society is expecting them to just continue on. Like, mm. society's expectation is okay. Well, your life may be shit, but if you work really hard and get good grades because you are smart, then you'll make it through. And it's like, okay, well, uh, like, like, mm. make it through to do what? You know, like, what am I, what am I aiming for exactly here? You know, and then these people just kind of fall by the wayside, and society doesn't make it, know how make to it deal through with them, to you know? make it through to you know take out a bunch of loans and go to right. college and exactly. do it again, and then take out a bunch more loans and go to you know grad school and do it again or whatever, and take yeah. out a bunch more loans and like you know get a mortgage on a house or whatever. And so they're on just and so constantly on. trying to meme you. It's the whole this world is run by ad agents and intelligence agents and and mm -hmm. and most of them most of the ones with the power are just doing it they're just in it for the boy pussy like okay they're that's, just that, that's not where i was expecting you to go with that but okay i i've okay through the realization that almost every billionaire has been implicated as a pedophile i've come to start when you, to when wonder, you say when you say implicated as a pedophile what do you mean okay. by that like associated with Jeffrey Epstein having gone to his island, um, yeah, you know, implicated in child sex trafficking, uh, or or child pornography having, or just being you know, being basically FBI case files or people who are protected by I, the CIA. I am I'm I have no doubt that like lots of them are uh, you know billionaire pedophiles. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean I don't know like like n having been. Being associated with Epstein isn't isn't like a strong enough link for me because like Epstein was a well connected billionaire yeah. himself. He I mean, probably it, knew all kinds and, of guys. And part of part yeah. of what him and 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 uh, Ghislaine Maxwell were trying to do is to make themselves constantly photobombing everybody so that everybody's yeah. implicated with them. You know. Yeah. And yeah, I definitely yeah, yeah, think yeah, there's yeah, different yeah, yeah. levels. That's why, like, and I know this. Did Did you see the thing about Ghislaine's Reddit account? Oh my god, that shit is Giz fucking Ghislaine incredible! Was that, the is the, that is the revolution of the century. Karma count account on Reddit. And the she first was like account a, to yeah. ever reach a million karma. She um, was like, she was like a moderator point, made, of, of, you, of World News, I think. Like a big subreddit. People she was are a speculating that she may have actually owned Reddit for a brief period. Oh that like god. she had actually bought it. And, like, and that she's like literally one of the most influential Reddit users of all time. <laughs> and I completely believe it, but it, okay, you have to think about it this way because this is this is all plays into why I was thinking about this because like why would you feel the need to become a billionaire? Like for me personally, that's I, a great question. Right. I love this this question. Like, uh, let's see where it leads us. I mean, Ben, you you are probably the person i know who is the most satisfied with the lowest quality of life and i mean that as a compliment because i i honestly do uh -huh. admire that about you because i'm so i i'm somebody who like when i picture like what is the ideal way to live i think yeah. of like being just like a mountain man in a cabin like growing my mm. own shit off the land letting the insects have my crops and shit you know like not using no pesticides nothing Doing unnatural some, some Hen henry david thoreau thing with the the rats eating your potato or the moles eating your potatoes i don't know that reference but it's probably the same thing as the arjuna episode that i am referencing so like you know hey, who, uh, just, who just joined this call Gib oh, gibbo hi. just jumped in hey are Hello. you recording am, yes. are you recording yes okay cool All right. we're we're fucking going to town yeah. So okay. I was just explaining to Ben that like what I consider to be the like the my picture of like an ideal way of life like morally is like being you know like a mountain oh, person morally like okay. like like morally and also like I think this would be 
I think it should be like the most peaceful way to live your life to like live in tune with nature out in the mountains, like growing enough crops to just take care of however many people there are around, you know, fostering a, a, a healthy relationship with the planet as you just live your life casually without really concerning yourself too much with like advancing, you know, things mm. like culturally or whatever. Um, That's but, really hard, though. It it is it is it is difficult and you have to basically decide too. that that's going to be your whole life you know yeah is like is homesteading and I think that the the purpose of society is that we don't need everybody to do that a few people can do it enough to provide for everybody but I yes. think that we have I think that we are we build our societies too big that like ideally there would be more people doing the agriculture for the benefit of uh, you know, making each community like more agriculturally stable, less reliant on factory farming and all the other bullshit that, mm. and, and factory everything, factory education, more fa like, more locally sourced. Yeah, like mm -hmm. I, De ideally, decentralized, decentralized. Yes, more decentralized because like when you, when we think about like the ideals of like communism and like what it should implement in the population is that like more people mm. want to work for the government because of the fact that there is no higher station really like the greatest purpose you can have is towards the betterment of the community but like yeah communism only really in my mind like makes sense on a community scale like within one isolated community that has its own rules and like the you, i think that there's a good I, reason I have a to have like i have a yeah. counterpoint to that Counter uh -huh. counterpoint um part of the reason that uh and uh econ will uh you know make fun of me because i'm so predictable for saying this demonstrably true thing uh, uh -huh. the part of the reason why, why communism has never succeeded has never really been implemented is because you can't really have it in on a local level or even on a national level you can't really have real communism a classless moneyless stateless society in a world where you have to engage in trade with other nations who do have class and money. Um, so so like, basically, I mean... Communism can only really work in like a completely isolated society that, or on an entirely global scale. Okay, so by that definition, is there any meaningful difference between communism and anarchy? Um, well... Because it sounds that, like you're describing my ideal anarchy society. Like By that... I mean, I guess, I guess the ideal anarchist society is also a classless, moneyless, stateless society. So I guess yeah. they are similar. I guess I don't know exactly what the distinction would be. I mean, I, I think to me, the main reason that I run away from the idea of communism and prefer the idea of anarchy is just that, like, with communism, it's always going to come down to someone's making the rules and about, like, what is ideal. And, mm -hmm. like... I don't know who like, I don't know how people would become a part of the decision making process of what are those ideals without like democratic process the, of some kind. You know? Yeah. Well, yes. Um, I mean, part of like part of the idea and I don't know exactly. I'm not sure if this is like a Marx thing or if this is like a later thing. But like part of the, the idea is that you you move towards a society in which you abolish. Well, Basically, you, you you democratize everything, and the mm. idea is that like the more you democratize everything, not just government, but like you know the workplace and stuff like that, and yeah. like community life, and the more you democratize everything, like the details kind of take care of themselves. I was reading, I think it was in Cap Capital, but I I was reading somewhere where it, no, it might have been a video, I don't remember, but the idea is like if the more things become democratize like we don't have to speculate on well what does civilization look like under communism how do we handle this or that or the other thing the answer is we don't know we we'll find out when we get to a point where things are are fully democratized and people can decide things for themselves communally and then they decide and it might vary from place to place right like one community mm -hmm. might might run things one way and another another way right 
Um, right. I don't know. I guess lately I've been on this vein of thinking that like the point is not okay. How do we structure society? How do we just? How exactly do we redistribute everything? The point is the democratization wherein right. we just make those decisions uh, as I mean, we need ideally to. Ideally, the, the I, society should be in a flow state where we can mm -hmm. make decisions as quickly as possible. And like, I think the biggest problem with the government is too much bureaucracy. And like, I, I mm. which is ultimately like the the you know what makes me fall I guess libertarian because I want the government to be smaller. But it's not about it's not even for me about the power of the government being smaller. It's about the government's power to be reactive, to like change its mind, to, you know, like mm. for think about like how hard it is for somebody to be let out of prison who who did not commit the crime. We're like, we've reassessed right. the case. We know that like there's not proper evidence, but like it takes 15 years for this person to get released. You know, that's a product of like overbloated bureaucracy. And it, there's there's yeah. a lot of things that get caught up in that and it's like <clears throat> we need the, both we it's like both going in and out i guess it's like the the government needs to be able to react quicker and then also to take it back quicker you know the the, the <clears throat> Well, the, yeah, the idea of the bureaucracy there cuts both ways because on the one hand, the situation you describe is bad, but on the other hand, that situation also means that there are all these procedures that we have to go through before someone gets the death penalty, right? Like, mm. that's the reason why giving someone the death penalty is more expensive than just giving them life in prison yeah. because I mean, there is all this red tape to go through, and it's because right. we don't want to do this by accident. We want to have these procedures yeah. to make absolutely sure that we're not just doing I mean, this willy-nilly. I think it's weird that we even have the death penalty. <clears throat> like, I don't, I don't really is, get there the point a, of it, you know? It, the, yeah, the, there is a great video. I think it's his newest video by Sean where he talks about the death penalty. And, yeah, like, the point of the death penalty is basically just to make people like feel better like not yeah. the victim it's to make like it's because right. people in society are mad like the argument is that it's a deterrent the evidence isn't really there to suggest that it actually is a deterrent the purpose yeah. is because like people who are mad about crimes want punishment and that's mm -hmm. the point <laughs> so yeah, like, i mean at, yeah. at some point i will finish foucault's crime and punishment and uh form foucault. a foucault wait that's dostoevsky no, what's the name of the book I'm thinking of then? Not Crime and Punishment. Uh, it's a similar title though, the Foucault uh, book. Slime and Punishment. About uh, about um. Uh, God damn it. That's F O U C A F U C K Y O U R F C R F C K. Uh, Foucault. Foucault. It's the one about fucking the death penalty and why it's a good. And I haven't read it yet because it's uh, scary. I don't. I don't know. I'm well, actually, sure. it's more about why any it's not even actually it's not about why the death penalty is good. It's why about why public execution is good, and why <laughs> the death penalty is mm. bad. Actually, because it's not as good as public execution. Because it's not public enough. Discipline and punish. That is the it's name. It's not televised. Hmm. I see. World's deadliest executions. Uh, that's a Simpsons Simpsons reference. Hey, you know um, what's real fucked up? Just thinking about this. Is that yeah. everything I I own and have ever owned was made by somebody I will never meet and have never met, like everything except for the like That's, the uh... small like little bits of, you know, things that people physically made and given to me. shit that you have. Yeah. That's a little thing. That's a little thing we like to call alienation from the means of production, my friend. Yeah. That's you better. You're talking straight marks right now. You're gonna get. You're gonna fucking yeah. radical. Mm. No, I, I, uh, <laughs> cool. I, I feel that too. Like my, <laughs> my ideal, my present ideal is like I want to have basically just like a town of people I think are cool, uh, where everybody mm. makes their own shit, and it's just a self-sustaining economy of people making cool shit and supporting you know, one another on the basis of making cool shit. I was, I was watching this. I, 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 I like that idea, but it reminds me of something. I, like, yesterday I found this channel called Tasting History, where a guy cooks recipes from, like, cookbooks from, like, Victorian times or, like, medieval times or even, like, ancient Greek stuff. Like, he made this fish sauce called garum out of, like, fermented fish paste. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, it's like he does, like, historically accurate reenactments of food that people in the ancient world used to eat. It's pretty interesting. But, um... 
he he there's one video i think he's making some like some old bread i, I forget what the name of the bread is but he is talking he talks about uh, chaucer's the canterbury tales which i read in high school but i don't remember at all and i guess in chaucer chaucer i guess really hates millers like he basically thinks that all millers are like greedy businessmen and like thieves and like rat rapscallions and rogues and and like thinks they should be put to death Jesus. because like the well, like repeat offenders right for like people that are like like cutting their cutting their flour with stuff that's not flour he's good i guess i guess like in medieval times in a time when you would have lived in a little village where like one person makes the bread and another person like you know yeah. forges your plow or whatever the millers there was a, an idea that these people, you know, owned the means of production in the sense that, like, everyone's got to eat and they're the ones that are feeding everyone. But they're greedy and, like, they'll overcharge you for the bread. Like, they'll they'll yeah. fill it full of air so you have to pay more. They'll put their thumb on the scale <laughs> so, like, so they you think you're buying more than you really are. A golden thumb. The phrase was, a, he has a golden thumb, which both implies wealth, but it's also like, is like, the thumb is, the thumb is heavy. The thumb is heavy on the scale, so it's, it's he's charging you for you more know, than you're actually getting. May, maybe maybe Millers, dude. Fuck Millers. I hate them. Maybe this is arrogant. Everything of me. wrong with society. Maybe this is arrogant of me to think, but I feel like throughout history, like the the problem has always just been that like people can't really exp like communicate well. Like, I think that like communication has never been very good, and that like in the past. I think we really, like, underestimate how fucking confused everybody was about one another's intentions and, like, mm. how difficult it probably was for people who were not, who didn't know each other and, like, literally everything that was going on with one another all the fucking time. Because that's how people, like, were. It's, like, people in your community, you literally know everything about them. You see them constantly. There is no lapse in your understanding. But, like, people were so... Because of that, people are super tribal. And, like, people from other communities, like, even if it's just the the next neighborhood over, it's just, like, I have no mm. idea who this person is. Oh, and then, these, like... This guy's from Shelbyville. I don't trust him. Yeah. I don't know and people I think across the, the street who they are. Well, that's mm -hmm. the thing. I think that the creation of the nuclear family created it so that every household became its own community. Because we started just, like... The, the the idea of the 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 fifties idea right. of like the family is like you personally have to right. own everything. You don't rely on anybody. You own everything in your house. You have your own yeah. copy of everything that you could possibly need, and the therefore you're self reliant. Yeah. But like people think that they need to be self reliant to be successful, and it's like you don't. You could literally share these things the with other people family and live. Is like a more recent idea. Yeah. Like, like, obviously people have, like, lived, like, just them and their partner and their kids. Like, that obviously always happened. But that wasn't always seen as, like, the ideal or the modern yeah. standards, you know? People lived in, like, big, like, like extended family dwellings or whatever. Like, well, that it, was, no that's normal for a lot of human history. It, it, I think it's a result of having a culture of excess and proposing that excess as necessity because of the fact uh, by way of sociopathy, because it's like in America, mm -hmm. we're told to fear our neighbor. Do not associate with other people. Uh, other people are scary. You should stay away from them and have all your own things, you know. And so you convince yourself that you need to own, like, say, uh, a microwave, right? Like how often in the day does one person use a microwave? And imagine mm -hmm. if there was like a microwave somehow in like the middle of the street in your in like a cul-de-sac, right? And everybody shared the same microwave. Probably wouldn't mm. really be that much competition over the microwave. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, point I see being, where you're going. you know, and think about how much money is spent on all eight people in that cul-de-sac owning their own microwave. It's like this what is if, what the what government wants you to be because that yeah. level of consumption causes you to spend all this money that literally you could just go to your neighbor if you knew your neighbor, you could just go to mm -hmm. their house and use their microwave, you know? And yeah. this is something that kids understand cuz kids are in a position where they, you know, they have no power and so parents will let them sort of you know, rely on them a little bit more or adults in general might do that, especially in suburban places. But like, you know, that doesn't mean that those like that, that like nothing changes about that when they grow up other than that they become more afraid of other people and more, you know, uh, oh, insistent yeah. on self-reliance. I'm know? just realizing that that is like the cause of so much social distance, like not to use that term, uh, you know, yeah. like, the, yeah. the the idea that I could like 
live in a rented flat with a bunch of other people and share like a bathroom uh, is like, yeah. oh, gross. I don't want to have to like talk to people. I don't want to. <laughs> I want to say anything to people down the hall. I just want to have my own house. I want to buy my own house so I don't even have to talk to people. That's what I'm doing. That's what my big dream is to live alone completely. And it's much more expensive. Why? I don't know. It's just like why? Because. Uh, What's the? What, you're, you're, you're I'm not saying, saying you're this saying is a good this. thing. I'm saying this is like okay, how ben, society okay, is made. Okay, okay, yeah, you're, you're you're saying that it's not a good thing, but then like okay, so like so ben, you don't, you don't still question. want it, right? Because it sounds I, like it sucks. I think it's I think it's a difference of faith, and it, it, it's a strange one. It's interesting. I think that, uh, for me at least, it's like I have very little faith that I'm going to share a house with somebody and it won't suck. But uh-huh. there are certain people who – like sharing a house with you was not a problem for me because you are pretty much completely on your own anyways. Like you We don't... did have a lot of space. Yeah. Uh, and, and you pretty much keep to yourself anyways. You, you're not very like demanding – of attention mm. or anything you 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 don't cost <laughs> much money you don't like you you no, don't use a lot I? of you don't use very much electricity you don't use very much water you don't use very much food you know uh so Easy. and you eat my leftovers it's... so like if anything you're helpful <laughs> uh- that's uh, <laughs> like that's that's such a win. They, they're a real yeah. symbiotic relationship. Everybody yeah. fucking gets what they need. Beautiful. Yeah. You are a very nobody easy... lets me eat their leftovers now. And, Everyone and, throws their leftovers away. I hate it. And Tom is very similar to you. You know, having him as a house guest never really a problem. The only concern could be like privacy, just not being able to like walk around my house naked comfortably. You know, right, uh, right. Which never stopped you, anyways. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't to this day. Yeah, but like <laughs> I, I so. You know, to me, it's like there's only, there are certain people who I'm willing to share a house with. Uh, n- I don't imagine there being that many people who I could. But I think it's the fact that I even have faith that I could have a super comfortable home environment where it's like just me and the closest people and we could be as open as we want is like a romantic idea to me. And I think that you, Ben, are just somebody who like – on some level just doesn't really believe that that's necessarily true or even need it or maybe you just feel so Wait. comfortable that you just d- don't even care and like sorry it's easy that for I, you that i don't believe what's true that that that, that you could have a situation where you would be 100% comfortable at all times with another person um no 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 <laughs> and so like the lack of you're like, you're correct it's kind gross, of like gross in a, in a strange way the 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 idea like your thought in your head of like okay well i will never have a 100 percent uh like comfort zone so i might as well just have whatever comfort zone like I don't. You know, I'm. I'm actually really confused. What you're saying? Okay. What what point you're you're making about me or about society or uh, but, I, what I can't trying, follow. What I'm trying to say is that. Okay. Um, for me, it's like. If I were to live in a house, let's say, like, okay, I lived with you in Davu, right? And yeah. living with you in Davu was fine. And and shade. And, and Shade, what's your name? Shade and Amber, yeah, they were. I yeah. forget that they were around because we saw so little of Maybe them. They were never there, yeah. And that situation was fine because, like, you're all people who I am comfortable around. I'm comfortable sharing a house with you, right? But, like, obviously I wouldn't do everything that I would do in my own room in the middle of the house, right? Like, how many times, I mean, did, you, yeah, how many yeah. times did I come to your room and you're like, wait a minute, I'm naked, I have to put on clothes, you know? Usually, right. usually. So, like, <laughs> there's a certain level of you have a comfort zone of your room, but, like, you step out of that to go into the house. And, like, for me, it's like I like having a house where the whole house is all my comfort zone. And the only way that can be possible is if the only people sharing the house with me are people I'm completely comfortable with, you know? But if if I didn't mm-hmm. feel that there was anybody I could be completely comfortable with, then I would probably just be like, okay, well, I'm fine with just having people I'm somewhat comfortable with and having my own room as a comfort zone because it's not like a terrible way to live, and I think it's how most people live. I don't think there's many people who can find somebody who, like, is just going to do, like, literally be down for absolutely every 
tendency they ever have, I don't, you know? You know, like, I've had, I've had, like, obnoxious living situations before, where I didn't like the people that I lived with, and I wanted to avoid them, and I felt anxious about yeah. seeing them. I don't feel that way here. Like, sometimes there will be times when, like, I don't really feel like socializing, but, like, I'll have to go and like to the kitchen to get something and I'll have to walk through yeah. the living room. People are in there and I'll go, Oh, they're going to say hi to me. And like, right. wh- whatever. That's fine. That's like not a problem. It doesn't, it doesn't bug me. So I don't have any yeah. problems mm, with that. It bugs here. me. Um, the, uh, the, I've definitely had was, that big time in the past with was, like particularly family members. There was a moment, uh, well, multiple I, moments. I, I never feel like anything is demanded sorry, wait, of let me. Give it finish first. The, okay, there were sorry. multiple moments uh, when I was at uni, when I was like uh, in a shared house with six other people in their own rooms and stuff where like i needed i was hungry i was at the computer in my room safe safe no one can get me in here safe oh no i can hear people in the kitchen i'm hungry i need to Mm -hmm. eat but you know what i think i'll just starve i'd rather just like be hungry wait until they're gone to bed and then i'll eat and that happened a couple times and i was like i know i mean i know but i did it i know the feeling no i know the feeling I, I used to, I used to, I'm a little less like that now. I did, sometimes I still feel like, oh God, like, there's people around. Like, I don't, yeah. I'll just, I'll just wait. I mean, back in I my, do, I guess that's true. I, yeah. Back in my hikikomori phase in particular, I, I'm, I'm really stealthy. I'm very good at not being detected. And like, it was especially, <laughs> like especially in, in the, under the like waist high walls. Yeah, I mean, like particularly in in big houses, it's it's fun because there's a lot of different ways around, and you could just quietly sneak up on people and like, um, you know, I'm big on both like surprising people by just like when they turn around, I'm suddenly there, and also like, uh, you know, just just but also just concealing my presence when it's like, okay, like you said, if like I want to get something downstairs but like i hear somebody's down there i will not go down until like i hear the sound has cleared and like you know i might still suspect that they might be awake and if they hear me they might say oh you're still awake and i'll go "Ah! don't think about the fact that i'm awake Ah!" (laughs) run away uh so the 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 fucking people turning around i don't feel very much pressure here with with the people i live with now i don't i'm not worried yeah. that they're gonna say anything i don't i don't care what they think <laughs> I, uh, right. i'm just like yeah whatever and if i don't want to hang out i'll just be like okay bye i i fucking hate the moments when when somebody's like oh you scared me i didn't hear you i didn't i didn't sense your presence it was like I, I, do. I don't make get, I don't make a lot of noise. I guess I don't breathe heavily or stomp see, heavily, and then they turn around. I'm not even says, trying to be stealthy, and I feel like yeah. th- I come says, across as like a fucking serial killer. It makes me feel. Everybody bad. says that I'm I'm very stompy. I'm like stomp apparently. I'm very heavy footfalls, but like also I'm very easily snuck up on, and like sometimes yes, it happens all the time that I'll that I've I'll done be it cooking to you many times. It's yeah, really it, it's happened with a bunch of people here like i'll be cooking or something and i'll just turn around and someone will be in the kitchen ben, they you, came in when i went and i'm like oh god you are so easily frightened that i i think got to a point <laughs> i got to a point yeah. where i started expecting it so it was like i like i tried to i would try no, to like, yeah, like my, approach you in my, a way that would like minimize the level yeah. of stress that it was going to induce <laughs> <laughs> like yeah like like people now like like my friend uh, uh dwoob will like he'll he'll like kind of like Ste- stomp a little loudly out the kitchen just to make sure, yeah. or he'll like knock on the wall or something before he rounds the corner. So I'm not like terrified. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might uh, call out ahead of time, just like, "Hey, Ben!" Before I even enter the room, just so you know, God, something something's yeah. coming. It's Danger just. Emerges. Well, I was just. I would. I. I was thinking of stuff like that. Like sometimes I try to make sure that my steps are pronounced, but not too pronounced. I don't want them to think I'm trying to get their attention because then they'll be saying, "Huh." And then I'll be like, uh, huh? uh, "What's going uh, on? Why are you stomping, bro?" Uh, I hate, I hate it when people are like, "Why are you st- walking so why heavy?" Why are you doing like, anything? I'm d- hmm? And I, and I'm literally just like, "Hey, I'm, hey, I'm walking here," and like, that's it. That's the answer. Yeah. Can't fuck. Don't fucking question Duh, me. People. Ugh. Hate, hate, hate being questioned. I hate when my methods are questioned. That's it. Yeah, well That's this is this is uh thought. this is fucking generalized anxiety disorder the podcast yeah. now. So uh... Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. Wait, you guys talk. I have to pee. I'll be back in two seconds. Thirty seconds. Go. Thirty seconds. Uh, Alright. Anxiety. Uh, this is a story about a guy named Al who lives in a sewer with his hamster pal, and I don't know any of the other words of the song because I never memorized it. It was really hard. You should have yeah. said long because I rhymed. Yeah, I thought about it, but I was like, that doesn't make any sense. So then I swerved.
and crashed but into a maybe, tree. Maybe, maybe, maybe making sense was overrated in that context. Maybe rhyming would have been more aesthetically pleasing. You know, I was thinking about anxiety. I feel like I used to like dismiss the idea that I had anxiety, even though I was like socially awkward and a bit shy. The right. idea of like people who had anxiety, they always talked about panic attacks and yeah. and like serious like immobilization things that they just could not do stuff. And I was like, well, I guess if yeah. I push myself, I can do most things. So I don't have that. But then I sort of internalize that as like every time I do feel a bit scared, there's no there's no excuse. I have I don't have anxiety. I have to do it. There's no way you know, that I could be like some like mental blockage that here I'm just like stupid or bad or something. I I think this is what we Back. what what you what you're describing is what you and I and and I think a lot of our audience have in common with with our anxiety is that like it's it's like well I'm. I am sane and like I am smart enough to keep a handle on this. Like I don't ha I don't have panic attacks all the fucking time because I understand that I am like what's wrong with me. So like you know to some degree it's like I understand that I'm panicking. Like I know that's what's happening. And like I mean I have had panic attacks. Um uh I am prone to them, but I I don't know. They're not too scary for me because it's kind of like I understand what's going on. I know why I'm panicking. You know, if anything, the fact that I'm having a panic attack is kind of a relief in that it's like, okay, I get it. I get, I get what's happening. This is just anxiety buildup. You know, and I, I think mm. that that's, I think that's something that a lot of us um, struggle with is literally like being like, well, I feel the exact same way as a crazy person. However, I'm not crazy. So what do I do with that? You know, like, like I'm not demonstrably <laughs> crazy. It, it's, it's sort mm -hmm. of a case of like, you know, uh, the what's what's the phrase that basically mean like, you know, the the, the bigger wound gets the band aid. Like, what am I? Is there an oh, idiom that the, means that? The, 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 the squeaky wheel squeaky gets, wheel the, gets oil? the grease. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Holy shit. <laughs> I had to literally <laughs> yep. create a new idiom to try to remember that the bigger, idiom. The bigger wound <laughs> gets the band aid. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So it's like, you know, yes, the people who are having uncontrollable panic attacks <gasps> are the ones who are going to, you know, who are going to feel like they need to seek help from somebody and and get that dealt with and then the people of us who are like okay well i don't quite have uncontrollable panic attacks but i feel everything just short of that and i still could use help but i don't like need help so badly that i am a squeaky wheel you know mm. so it's like mm. i'm just a fucking half flat like i'm a halfway deflated wheel i am i i have poor traction on the road and i am a hazard but i am not <laughs> obvious enough for you to fucking get my air pumped up you know which I is mean, which is what i drive on basically is four of those <laughs> i mean um a lot of like uh therapy or whatever is about or i don't know i'm a fucking idiot and i don't know what i'm talking about sorry if this is stupid oh, go but i'm for gonna it. say it anyway i think a lot like a lot of therapy and and psycho shit <laughs> you know, is about uh like just it's just about managing symptoms yes like it's it's just and it like if your symptoms are managed and if you feel that you are living more or less successfully right. without like great interruption from your issue whether you rec whether you have issues or not if, yeah. but if they're not fucking you up then like that's, okay th that is something that okay i think this is a problem in basically advertising for psychology is that like they they want to give everything a diagnosis so that everything is like clearly like we know what we're working towards we have names for things and we can help these people out but like by viewing everything that way um it's like like Psychology is almost like an advertisement of like, hey, is your life really fucked? Then you should come mm -hmm. seek help here. And it's like psychology and, and, and therapy shouldn't be just for people whose life is uncontrollably fucked. It should be for anybody mm -hmm. who's dissatisfied at all. Like, 
you can iron out um, the dissatisfaction. Sure. You know, like therapy and, and therapy doesn't have to be literally paying a, a psychologist to do it for you. It could just be talking to people because that's all it is. You talk to a person who has I mean, more perspective there... than you do about how the mind works. You you have plenty yeah. of friends who can probably give you a, a, something akin to a therapy session, you know, if you have friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and if not, make friends. It's 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 good therapy, you know, uh, to talk to mm. people who, who could understand you. But like that's essentially all therapy is. And if you understand psychology yourself you don't really need to talk to a therapist you could just talk mm. to other people who understand psychology I, you know i have been because yeah, i've been thinking about that like for years like i don't really need to pay for things when i could have like people to talk yeah. to but um it is a bad idea generally i found to go to the public and to say on twitter or in a youtube video yeah it's helpful somewhat because it's like a it's <sighs> a different I... medium but like I've 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 got counseling like recently for the first time ever. I've paid it, for a fucking bunch of stuff. Um yeah. and I've had a few sessions now and the I, the appeal is not that they know more than the people who could reply on Twitter or anything. I mean they do know more. Right. But it's not that's not like the thing I'm paying all this money for. It's the 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 knowledge and the the security that I can say all of this stuff and they are not ever going to cause, they're not ever going to cause Twitter drama. They're not ever going to cancel me with this yeah. information. This information stays <laughs> here. They are not, like, I am not uh, at risk of making, like, ruining their day because it's their job right. to listen to me. I don't have to worry about, like, dr bringing the mood down or, like, doing mm -hmm. anything to, like, a friend that would you know, like, make their day bad or, or you know, whatever the, the, the anxiety right. is. Like, it's all just, just speak. And it's it's better than speaking to a brick wall or to a microphone and then deleting mm -hmm. the recording because it's a person and they can respond. Yeah. So it's like that it's, is the value, I think. The trust element is definitely, is definitely big. When I, when I see someone go on Twitter with, like, a problem, right, and be like, guys, I'm having a problem this is really bothering me. Let me bear my soul. Um, my reaction is not good. My reaction is, is like, ooh, if you're, <laughs> this is not the place for that. You're I mean, doing, I, you're I, doing I it, it wrong. Though, like, you're doing it wrong. I get, you know? I get why. No, no, no. I get why they would do it, but I don't think they should. And I think they should know better. And I'm think, like, ooh, yeah, I, don't, please don't do this. I think it's, it's sort of, it's sort of a matter of like these people don't know who they can talk to, and sure, I would, I would, I'm, I would I'm highly, totally, encourage... I totally sympathize for why. Yeah. I totally sympathize why they're doing. It. I just don't think it's gonna do what they want it to do. I guess, yeah, I guess, does. I would say because like yeah. those people. I completely agree with you. Like, don't posting that kind of shit like on Twitter is usually not very helpful, but it can attract people to your DMs who might be able to help you. But Maybe. more effective than that is just Maybe. going to people's DMs. Like, because people come... I, I opened up my DMs after coming out. I have become a literal fucking guidance counselor for the entire trans anime community. So, like... Oh, God. You know, I, I talk to people all the time about their issues and stuff. Uh, but, like, you know, it's easier if you're, like, coming to me, like hey do you have a comment on this situation and it's like okay like i know i i know why you are coming to me you know and like if i have a response i'll give it to you if i don't i won't um that's just mm -hmm. it's as simple as that i give responses when i have thoughts uh, i read when i have time you know uh if i'm mm -hmm. interested if i'm bored so it's not like i respond to absolutely everybody or anything like that um, just, you know, the level of engagement I feel appropriate. But, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I do think that for a lot of those people, it's like they can't afford therapy. They don't – they don't – a lot of them just haven't yet accepted that they have a problem or, like, don't really – they – again, they think, oh, I'm not that extreme. Like, oh, I don't have mm -hmm. panic attacks or, oh, I don't have, like, extreme body dysmorphia. And it's like, okay, well, do you find that you live most of your life in a uh, in a sort of dissociated haze where you're not really paying attention to anything going on around you? And it's like, oh, yeah, that's how I live every moment of my life. And it's like, okay, seek therapy. You know, like, that's not – it's mm. not supposed to be that way. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like – yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you definitely. Mm, but it's all I've ever known. Mm, Same. Nah, I'm so comfortable here. 
Yeah. Um, mm. It's nice Lol. and gray. <laughs> imagine, imagine living in a dissociative haze. Cringe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dissociative yeah, haze, man. boys. There's mm, hashtag. Dog. Mm. 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 Um, ben, so, you you're yeah. a, you're a Lincoln Park fan, yeah. yes 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 that's right so i've been thinking a lot about lincoln park and about chester bennington lately because of him killing himself and uh right i don't know if you know much about his past but like no it's nothing nothing at all uh well uh it's horrible so i'll say it in a funny way uh but Mm. he uh was um sexually abused for like uh years by by like an older friend and he was afraid to say anything hate, about it you hate to see it yeah he was afraid to say anything because he thought that they would think he was gay and uh mm. like it's 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 really interesting that, like, that would really suck to imagine right? being gay <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so, so he he uh you know when you when you listen to Linkin Park's music, knowing this and knowing like he was also he basically became an alcoholic, uh, and mm. like in early Linkin Park he was an alcoholic and a lot of the song like Crawling is about alcoholism that like he said so as much as hmm. like it's about my an inability to escape my alcoholism and when you look into the lyrics knowing why he was an alcoholic and he's talking about these wounds that will not heal. Uh, and how to, fear is how I fall. It's like, okay, to, well, this is what the song's about, you know? I see it. To be fair, you can read <laughs> almost anything you want into the lyrics of a Linkin Park song. Uh, but that's, that's uh, it's it was fascinating to me to, because I've always felt that way. It's like, oh, anybody could project onto this. But once I actually knew what he is, like what it's actually, like what he actually went through personally. Mm. And I mean, particularly with some of the later songs, because... He, you know, aside from the fact that he went through alcoholism, he later on, uh, he, because he became a recovered alcoholic, and there's a bunch of songs that are about, like, alcoholic recovery, about re- recovering from your past traumas. They have one song in one of the songs is called, like, Victimized, that's just like, you know, you've been victimized, or whatever, and mm-hmm. uh, so, like, you know, I think that he was he was dealing with these demons, trying to move through them, um, and, like, holding himself to a really high standard, and it seems as though basically what happened is that when Chris Cornell, the singer of uh, um, Soundgarden, killed himself, who was like one of Chester's like best friends and personal idols, he like couldn't take it. And not too long later, he lapsed, dr- uh, drank some alcohol, couldn't take the idea that he would become an alcoholic again and killed himself. So wait, who was it that died that made him relapse? The the Soundgarden lead singer, you know, Black Hole Sun. Uh, mm, Chris Cornell. I don't know his. Okay, cool. Um, so right. he had committed suicide not too long beforehand, and then Chester seemingly like fell as well. But, anyways, mm. it's it's fascinating to me because of the fact that um, before he was in Lincoln Park, I had not known this. He was a part of a band called Gray Days, just gr- gray and then days D A Z E, um, and I they 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 like reproduced their first album. Before Chester died. So, like, this was going to come out. Then he killed himself. And it now is out. Like, they finally released it. The songs have been on the radio. And it was really funny because I saw that the when I first heard the song, I saw it said Grey Days. And I thought, oh, there's a band that's called Grey Days. That's funny because my I've called myself Grey in reference right. to the fact that I spend my time in a Grey Days. This is perfect, right? Mm. And I'm listening to it and I'm listening to the music and I'm like, this sounds just like Linkin Park, which is really funny because I grew up listening to Linkin Park and thinking, you know, like connecting to those emotions, not even realizing it was Chester and his old band until I looked it up. And then I'm like, okay, this all makes sense. Hot um, fucking damn. But like the songs, I, the album is like, I won't say it's great. You might enjoy it. Um, it's pretty all right, like radio rock type music, pretty much. Very like washed out and daisy. But like the lyrics, from the perspective of knowing that he killed himself, the lyrics are too fucking depressing. Like oh. the the second track, Shit. the second track is like maybe maybe things will get better, maybe things will get brighter. Maybe, Ooh. maybe, and it's like, oh no! 
And they did it. <laughs> they clearly did it. No, I guess I guess not. Well, yeah. maybe next time. <laughs> but it, it's just funny because uh... like that music. Again, like Linkin Park, like you said, the emotions are painted with such a broad brush. They don't seem to be about anything in particular. And like listening to Grey Days, which is their e- even earlier, you know, writings in Linkin Park. Like this is must be how he felt when he was a teenager. Maybe resurfacing this, these this emotions. Was, Grey, Grey Days was from before Linkin Park. Yeah, that was the band he was in for like six years before Linkin mm-hmm. Park, and they were like they broke up because they just were like, it wasn't going anywhere. And then he joined yeah. Linkin Park and became huge. So like. You know, I think he was basically trying to, like, readdress these past emotions, um, and so he was thinking about them a lot, and then, you know, Chris Cornell killed himself, and he's like, well, if Chris couldn't make it, I can't fucking make it, you know, because he tweeted something like, after Chris Cornell died, like, I can't imagine, like, living in this world without you, or something like that. Um, Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, if you ask me, he might have been gay for Chris Cornell. And that was what was, you know, what oh, was... Oh, no! He was gay after all! I mean... No! That's just my personal theory. But, like... <laughs> uh, sure. Okay. You know, but, like, it's just, like, man, the fucking... The lyrics... They're lyrics that, like, again, if you have heard this on the radio, you would just be like, oh, this is, like, cheesy fucking radio music. It's just so general. It could be anything. But it's like, this motherfucker actually killed himself. And we know mm. what he went through. We know he was an al- a recovered alcoholic. We know he killed himself because he relapsed. We know that he I was mean, an alcoholic because he was trying to deal with these childhood demons. And he wouldn't talk about it. Like, his wife became, like, a big advocate. All the stuff surrounding him after his death, that like, all the money surrounding him is going towards, uh, like, basically boosting mental health uh, normalization of, like, talking about mm-hmm. it. Because, like... Obviously, he was somebody who the reason that the lyrics of Linkin Park are so reserved is he didn't want to talk about it. You know, like he didn't want to be specific because it was too fucking hard to deal with. So, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, which ironically makes it connect to the most possible people. But it means that he was the most guarded person, you know, like the person Mm -hmm. least capable of actually confronting the reality of what had happened to him. Uh, So like and, you know, in his attempt ultimately f- fell it's just depressing <gasps> sorry to just bring down the room interesting everybody. no 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 <laughs> but i thought you'd that's appreciate that for. as a lincoln park fan I, I do that's neat no i didn't know i knew chester killed himself i didn't know shit about him other than that yeah i uh, hadn't until recently either but um well hey we're at we're at, do we're some at fucking an, an hour and 20, mails. and we've got like a million voicemails to get through, yeah, but let's, let's like try and rapid fire them. Yeah, Hippo, you still, are you still here? I'm, I'm still here. You, you, we're on, we're on speak pipe if you want to. Oh, the first one we're no. going to do is, yes, yes, I know. Yeah, there's like 30 it's, fucking voicemails in here. I'm going to try and just like, we're going to go fucking ba 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 through all this Hang shit. Because I'm, d- s- you know, Nate was like, uh, hey. I'll fucking curate these for a fee. Actually, um, and I'm like, no, nah, man, anarchy. Curation is for the birds. Everybody, everybody gets a platform here on the Pro Crastinators podcast. All right. uh, Call in and say some Nazi shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm there. Okay, here we go with Ben playing D&D. Go. Three, two, one, go. Ribbit, ribbit, motherfucker, I'm a goddamn frog. Yeah, okay. cool. All right. Good, good stuff. They <laughs> True. It's like, you know that meme that's like, what's your sign? I'm a Leo. Fuck you. I don't believe in that made up horse shit. And then he's like, so true to the periodic table. I was excited by how short that one was, but unfortunately, it's a rare breed amongst these in that regard. <sighs> We don't have to listen to all of them if they're boring. Right, let's see um, how Kanye, Kanye, the- Kanye, POTUS, POTUS, POTUS is. <laughs> Christ. Okay, here we go. Three, two. But no, but I'm saying that's me. That's me going so true looking at this song. Ribbit, okay. ribbit, ribbit. I'm a goddamn frog. Haven't played D&D in like two weeks now. Kind of kind of disappointed, but okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, Ka- Kanye, POTUS. Three, two, one, go. Yo, Kanye. I think this is going to be boring. Running for president. 
Um, everyone <laughs> yep. is saying that it's like a, a trick by Trump to get people uh, to vote Kanye. So then that like the right, yeah, everyone that is. Right, let's go to the next one. My 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 thoughts on this. Every, everyone says like, oh no, if people vote Kanye, then it'll split the vote and Trump will win. Like I think a lot of people who would have voted for Trump would vote for Kanye. Yeah, I, I don't I, see I don't see this as like a thing that's going to exclusively like no, cut into the Democrats. I agree with you at all. Uh, yeah, I I mean whatever, I just straight stupid. up wouldn't have voted if not for Kanye. I mean I'm only are you, going to are vote, you gonna vote, if for I could vote for Kanye. Yeah. Oh God, Jesus. Uh, whatever. I, Fine. Yeah, vote Kanye. Yeah, vote Kanye. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. I'll do it live. <laughs> right. You ready for Super Fuck. Smash Brothers? Pedo and Gino. I absolutely am ready. Okay. Three, two, one, go. It seems as if the Super Smash Brothers plays are all pedophiles. They're all mm-hmm. groping at children and kissing minors and the dog is crazy. That's <laughs> Nairo and Zero and the Kitaro are these Super Smash Brothers. I don't know if we need they're, 57 they're seconds of this. It's, it's a terrible thing that uh, happened. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it okay, was cool. Yeah. for a second. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> Fozzy Boy. Uh, yeah, it's... It's, There's um, another one. I, There's another Super Smash Bros. Uh, ultimate Pedo, Ultimate Gino, and it's, it's the same. It's almost it's the, the same, same length. length. Should we just listen to it? Let's I do guess it. so. Three, two, one, go. Well, it's happened. All of the Super Smash Bros. players are pedophiles. <laughs> they have been confirmed as such. Uh, fucking zero. Kataro, yeah, Nairo, this is take two. Yeah, this is a different voice. I guess he thought the first voice is too annoying. All right. I don't. I don't know if this, this is, is no better. This, this, if it's just like a worse. redo, I don't know if that's a remake or a sequel. Um, it seems like, like it he started like, off saying pretty much the same shit though. Oh, it was almost the, the second one. It's like, well, now it's all of them. So, oh, the situation has progressed. Uh, Maybe not. Um, I was seeing people. I was seeing people on Twitter saying like, oh no. I saw someone say like. God, if my family finds out about this shit, it's all over. I won't be able to go to Smash tournaments anymore. And at the time, I didn't know the context. <laughs> but in hindsight, I'm like, kind of hope they don't have any Smash tournaments for a while after this. <laughs> kind of hope they don't do it. I mean, they probably um, shouldn't be having Smash tournaments in the middle of the, uh, you know, COVID and all yeah, that. So. I, th- I think it was Vosh tweeted something about how, like, Sky Williams House is like the the Epstein Island of the Smash community. Do you know about this? Yeah, I I, I know nothing about any of I, this. I guess Smash a lot stuff. of these Smash tournaments were held at the home of this guy named Sky Williams, and it's not. It doesn't. There's no explicit accusations that Sky Williams, who I think is a guy, I don't even know that Sky is a is a pedophile himself. But like, I guess it was like at this house that like a lot of this fucking I don't know fucking diddling it happened. So it's like I don't know. Big it's diddle, like, the, the Dilliards. <laughs> yeah, the Dilliards room. Uh, let's 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 watch the best reality TV show of all time. Absolutely. In three, two, one, go. I've recently discovered this uh, absolutely crazy fucking reality show, and you might be thinking, "Oh, well, the reality shows—they're all—they're all staged, man. Reality—it's fake." No, this is like. The kind of reality show that gets canceled after the first season and it gets sued like a shit ton of uh, times afterwards and years to come. And then uh, the studio tried to hide its existence. But mm-hmm. it still exists. It's on YouTube. And there's like a bunch of people talking about it. Get uh, to the point. Uh, yeah, what is mainly it? just Fuck. JonTron. He made some videos about it. I don't care it, about fucking JonTron. But John it's Tron. fucking hilarious, man. And I, uh, all of you should watch it. It's all What's it called? on YouTube. It's called Kid Nation. It's fucking oh, brilliant, man. man. They they take uh, forty kids <laughs> and oh, they go to this. a literal ghost town and they just yeah, have what? them like live there for forty happened. days. They just like Lord of the like, Flies a class yeah. system and uh, Whoa, and okay, other okay, shit. I'm interested. And this is all just the first episode, man. And they split them into like factions. I've only watched one episode so far, but it's fucking amazing. And That's so crazy. Goddamn I've hilarious. never heard of this. Um, you gotta watch it, man. You gotta. I want to hear Kid Nation on the Procrastinators podcast because uh, it would, it's well, fucking. It sounds funny. like Ben is in, so I think you're I'm in. Finish. I'm in. Like, I don't know. I. It sounds like it could be insane, <laughs> but it, but because this is like on TV, this is on CBS. So like, how crazy can it really get? You know. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. Mm, we put hydrochloric acid in the water pistols. Mm, just um, to just to see, like, what would a child, what would an innocent child do? You know, who hasn't I, learned racism yet. I have to say, I don't know if I could possibly care about anything in the universe less than a minute and a half of my true Persona Five opinion. Forget I sent the other voicemails. <laughs> um, let's let's give it just. We gotta give it a shot. This is we gotta democratize. Five seconds. Democratize the, the voicemails. Okay, three, two, one, go. Uh, like a few weeks ago, I sent some gay ass voicemails about Persona Five, where I was like, "Oh, this part's too hard," and then another one where I was like, "Oh, I did it." Okay, but fuck that. Um, I I shouldn't have sent those. I, uh, I pretend I didn't. This is the real okay. opinion Not, I of Persona Five that them, everyone should wait, believe, wait, even I, though what, they don't. What, they just the real... unabashedly praise the fucking game. Um, what's the opinion? They think it's the best game of all time. It's not. Give me a it's number out of ten. Really good. So give me like, a number out of ten. Play the thumbs game, up or thumbs um, down. And it's really fun. Guys. You know, you're like, oh, can shut we, up. Yeah, can we please? Nah, guys, the end. Nah, this is one over. thing. One thing I ask of everybody. Speed doing your doing your calls. Thesis statement. Start mm. with a thesis statement that catches our headline. attention. Make it's me helpful. interested immediately. I will listen to you stammer and stutter and fucking try to make a point, but just please start off by just laying out why I should care, like, right away. Yeah, uh, it's, it's you know, it's just, that's just good writing, Yeah, you know, in general. Uh, next up, PCP secret cabal operation, green turtle thing. So that's mysterious. Let's find out what that's all about in three, two, one, go. Blah. Blah, blah. What, what, what is it? The alarms are sounding. What's going on? Sir, we have to evacuate. We're dropping at never-before-seen records. What is it? What's dropping? Our viewership? The number of PCP members per podcast? My newborn baby? All three, <laughs> sir. It's all dropping. The ship is sinking and it's turtles all the way down. No, yes. impossible. I gotta believe. We just gotta believe. Oh, yeah, baby. Little girls. Donatello, <laughs> what the hell is he doing here? Security! No, wait, sir. This might be our final chance. What? Donatello's appearance in PCP episodes actually correlates perfectly with higher ratings. We might be able to save the PCP <laughs> if we send him back in time. Fire up the time machine then. Listen here, you slimy green demented shell trash. We have to go back. You have to save the PCP. Oh, baby. I love stuff. This is, this is just... Come along with me. <laughs> <laughs> On a trip through PCP, <laughs> yeah, we could journey back to Radcon and save it all from Radcon. <laughs> I'm Donatello, and I like sex. <laughs> so. Wow. So, long way of saying that we should get Donatello on the PCP. <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, I, like, I think that can be a It had a music. It had a musical number. It had stakes. It had rising action. <laughs> yeah. I would call this vi- this a masterpiece. Great acting. Great acting. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you know, you really, be- you really believe that this is a guy who's trying to yell into yeah. the microphone, In but has to keep his voice world. down so yeah. he so he doesn't bother his parents. <laughs> yeah. You really buy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh good good stuff good stuff uh cool next one only 20 seconds thank god a dank wizard is a pussy wussy uh okay. i'm ready for this one three i had two, read it as Adam k wizard uh i know who this is but i will i will comment afterwards three Two, one, go. Oh, my, my name is a dank wizard. I'm, I'm such a pussy. Oh, ben <laughs> is Antifa. What, what a bad boy. He, his, his ideas uh. scare me. The, these radical far left ideas, they're so scary. Wow, I love you too, Dank Wizard. <laughs> um, do you know who that is? I have no idea. I it's it's that funny video. I did you see the funny video of the guy saying, don't support Digibro or the PCP because Digi is a degenerate and Ben is Antifa? I did not, but that is... Uh... I, I posted it on Twitter. I, I guess I'll... I don't know if I want to link it in the description or anything. I kind of think... I, I, the guy's been flooded with like YouTube comments, and I kind of don't know if we we need to do any more of of yeah. that. No, 
but um, I will I will post it for you here in the fucking chat so you can see. But yeah, it's basically, I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. Degeneracy, Antifa, these this podcast hates America. Uh, de- defund them, abolish them. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. It's it's great. You know, well, it's classic. Anyway, let's see if we can find something even one, one, better one. with this guy who's just got a YouTube link as their name of their voice. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna play it. Oh wait, the YouTube it. link is to please stop supporting Digibro and the Procrastinators by a dank wizard. Oh, okay. Oh, lol. So, okay. uh, which uh, is like a four, I'm... almost four twenty length. So I don't know if it's a <laughs> meme, but uh, I don't, I don't think so. It is almost I'm, I'm gonna exactly four twenty. Pretty... I'm gonna play this this voicemail though, just to see what it is. Three, two, one, go. Hey guys, have you seen this video? I'm linking okay. as the title of this voicemail by a dank wizard. Okay, it's yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. Fucking funny. Seen, we've seen it and it is pretty funny. All right, good cool. So, so okay, so that, right. that previous voicemail was somebody making fun of a dank wizard for being a uh, a dank pussy basically about a pussy a pussy wussy. Yeah. <laughs> I You think that was the real dank wizard? No, I thought they were making fun of a dank wizard. I thought that was the No. No, I no, think that's I think that's like what him. his real voice sounds like. <laughs> that's just how I think it's just uncontrollable smooching noises. <laughs> it feels included. it feels like what he would be. I don't you know, it's funny. I'm not I'm not mad. I just think it's funny that someone made a video like that and I have to sh- share it on Twitter because I just want to s- spread the love and good times around. Indeed. I want everyone to enjoy it as much as I do. Uh all right. Next one. 13 seconds. Thank you. Merciful. Shower speed run chads. Three, two, one, go. Any fellow shower speed run chads still hanging nope. around? I just got a 149. That's pretty damn fast. Not sure how I can get it any lower. <sighs> we'll see, though. We we should have leaderboards. 149 Submi- doesn't seem that fast for a shower. I mean, what are the requirements? Like, what all do you have to do? That yeah, like do I like do you, if you have the, to use conditioner, then it, it necessarily or? takes more than two minutes. If it doesn't require conditioner, if it's just shampoo and body soap, if you just use like an all in one, it would take like what thirty seconds. Like, I feel like I could do a really bad job washing myself off in like thirty seconds. Yeah, like yeah. just like jump in, grab I'm, the soap, rub it around, rinse off, jump out. You know, like that's all it takes, into... and it's technically a shower. We, 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 we need, we need categories. The... We need categories, right? We need speed run categories. It's like, yeah. you know, the category for like you with conditioner, without conditioner, shampoo, no shampoo, yeah. you know. Yeah. How rich is your lather? All right, Hippo, what were you trying to say? Um, I'm, sorry, I'm I, by the way, sorry I still call you Hippo because I realize everybody's calling you Gib again. Uh, since you don't really have an active hypocrite channel, I just got so used to saying Hippo. It has a good cadence to it. Uh. I don't mind. I feel like there's Either still works. no consensus. Mm. Uh, my my pref- my prefer my preferred pronoun is Gib. No. Is it okay? I was told okay. that, so I was like, okay. But I'm like it, 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 it you know, it doesn't matter. It's like it's it's just like I prefer the word Gib. gib. I've never sort of actually given. been sure. <laughs> well, okay. uh, now you know. Cool. I'm just saying, I've been getting into the long play shower game mm. where mm. I. I, I use the shower as my my chance to meditate, and I, I sit like crouch at the at the bottom of the shower, and I close my eyes and I go into a deep trance, and I wake up, um and uh, it takes a very long time. So I sounds made Ill. a new category long play. Yeah. Uh, you we need it's uh, it's it's good. Okay, we we can have a leaderboard, but the thing is, we're gonna need like it needs to be verified. So you're gonna have to film yourself showering and send it to us. Uh, and we're gonna have to manually review each mm. submission in order to verify that no, uh, you know, that there were no cuts in the footage. Yes, send uh, and that you were playing on all a, the pictures and, of you and, naked and that you were playing on approved shower. hardware, approved hardware only, in that you must have tits and a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardware I'm talking about. Okay, okay, uh, all right, all right, one all piece right. more like one piss. I am ready, as a matter of fact. Three, two, one, go. PCP, more like PPC. In other words, yeah. Oh, ocean of piss. 
It's like it's like the regular ocean. This guy's like on crystal meth. <laughs> yeah, <or something>. dude. <laughs> it's the PPC. The, I think this guy took where does, PCP. Where does podcast procrastinators, aka <laughs> the piss ocean? I think Why? this guy's actually on drugs. I think he's actually on drugs, guys. I would guys. believe that. I would very much believe that. I, he might be on uh, PCP. Voice Grail. Voice Grail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> voice Grail. No, voice. We gotta. I'm sorry. We have. We're hard. We're hard on crime. Hard on drugs. The drug war rages. We gotta put him in jail and get his. Put him in voice no, jail. Get voice his labor. Grail. We, it we was didn't the abolish funniest it. Funniest voicemail I've ever heard. Hmm. <laughs> The, 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 it's the line, PPC. The line, it's like the urine ocean. The line between greatness and and idiocy is so is so paper thin in a case like this. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm Genius or be, insanity. I am ready for an emotional journey because the next two are called Margar and Margar's apology. Margar has been <laughs> Mar, Margar has been sending voicemails like the last several weeks. Okay. Um, so they've clearly got a lot to say. So let's. Well, they're three, apo- they, two- they're saying something and then apologizing. So that's what I'm the most curious mm. about. Let's 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 jump in there with them. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Hello, PCP. Uh, yeah, I do always send the voicemails late on Saturdays. And I guess that means that I usually end up being the final voicemail. Uh, having been the final voicemail two weeks in a row, uh, I'd like to issue a challenge to the community to uh, beat me and be the final voicemail. Um, I haven't even been so, trying, so you, no. he succeeded uh, all massively. On I mean, a lot of people won this challenge because there's like ten more of these yeah. fucking things after this. You're, yeah, he's he's already won because like yeah, he normally sends. He was the last one because he would always send it on like the day of or the day before. But this time we got like we got like ten voicemails in the last like twelve hours or in the last like twenty four hours. Yeah. So I don't know what's up with that. Uh, so next. Margar's apology. Let's find out what he's so sad about. Three, two, one, go. Hey, Margar here. I'd like to issue a formal apology to Mr. Tom Oliver. Uh, uh, Recently, one of my voicemails, I asked why there were so few members coming onto the podcast. Uh, And Tom clarified that it's literally because of the fucking unemployment shit that uh, it's just better for him to not show up as much. So... Uh, oh, yeah, pretty cringe, right. uh, bad, bad take on taxes from the government. Uh, no hate uh, towards Tom, though. You gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, so sorry I complained about that. I, but the complaint stands for all the others, unless you justify it. So fuck you. I don't know what an apology was necessary for. I. <laughs> I'm I'm fucking on unemployment too, and I all and I just show up anyway. So uh, you know, whatever. No, no, fuck Tom. No, fuck Tom, and fuck you too, Margar. <laughs> voice jail, voice jail, huh? Huh? I thought we abolished no? the voice. Jail. No, uh, we did not. the The stream only raised enough to free. I think it was three out of the eight people in voice uh, jail. So we did not fully abolish it. We did defund it though, which is something. Um, but we're still. We have voice voice uh, chair. Hmm. Voice chair, you know, for the ones we really don't like. Oh, like with a single bare light bulb hanging above them? Yeah. Mm. Mm, yeah, see? Mm. Hmm. This will be easier if they tell us their voicemail secrets. Uh, Next one. 11 seconds. Message to Ben, part two. Mysterious. Three, two, one, go. What did I tell you, Ben? Get off Twitter. Bad Ben. Bad Ben, shoo, 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 go to your room. Who is come on, this? come on, come on, come on, come on. Get up, get up, come on, come on, come on. Fuck, I hate that. Yes, I know Twitter bad. Twitter bad, but we all do it. We're all guilty. I love Twitter, all right? so I have, I, I have no bad relationships with Twitter. I, you know, I just, I was thinking about it. All, like, all you see, all you see are the worst takes on Twitter. But I don't know, I'm of two minds about this, because on the one hand, yes, what I get on Twitter is a concentrated stream of the worst things that happen and the worst things that people think, and it makes me upset. So is that reality? Because on the one hand, I genuinely believe that these are real things that people think. On the other hand, they're probably not as common as they seem when, you, it's when both, you're getting them. Well, it's both no, that they're not Twitter. as common and also that these people are not as likely, like, acting on these beliefs, like... 
Like, I think, yeah. I think most people it, have, like... It's easier to talk shit on Twitter, is what you Yeah, say. well, not just talk shit, but I think that people live in ways that are contrary to their beliefs without realizing it. Because it's easy to, like, to, to intellectually internalize a set of beliefs, but to actually, like, perform in a way that would best cause, like, your... Like, to best further your cause is really difficult mm. for people on on any side. Like, most of your life is dedicated to just trying to live your life, not trying to further anything. And, like, in mm -hmm. many cases, living your life is actively furthering causes that are against you, and you really can't help it. I mean, like you've you've said many times, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, you know? Like, sure. So it's just like... And, I'm, and I am, and I did invent that phrase as well. Yeah. <laughs> to, make, to make people understand. Uh, yes. Uh, Sorry. Twitter is... Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say Twitter is like reductionist goggles like you put them on and you see the most reduced form of a person due to the character limit and mm -hmm. then through that you form opinions that are not necessarily correct in any way on the people that are speaking and then you get a sense that things are terrible and I don't know whether it's That's... it's actually that as, as bad as it is uh, I mean there are genuinely there are genuinely terrible people Let's, let's, yeah, let's acknowledge but like Twitter that. Twitter amplifies it. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I definitely, I, Ben. I think in many ways that you you are right in your approach to Twitter because, like, people take it too Thank seriously. You. Well, it, it's not like okay, like y y the way that you go about it is. I was I was I was catching some flack. I was catching some flack the other day the, about my approach on Twitter. Yeah. I would say the way you go yeah. about it is alienating, and, like, there are definitely people who it's going to make yep. mad, but do I think it's necessarily ineffective? Like, I do think that you if, you, if you really have a problem with the things that people are saying, aggressively letting them know that will cause them to reflect. They might just double down on hating you, but they will have to think it's... about their beliefs. That much yes. is true, and I do, like... I, I do not endorse bullying, but do I think bullying doesn't work or that it can't be a viable tactic? No. And so, like, ultimately... I don't, I don't see anything that I do as bullying. I'm, I, am, am I caustic sometimes? Yes. Yeah. I do think, I say mean I things? Saw, yeah, but, like... Would you say... It's, bu it's, bully, it's bullying if there's, like, an, infair, an unfair power dynamic I mean, that's being exploited. I mean, if I exploited. say bullying, I feel like it's a cuter way of saying being abusive or, or abrasive. Mm. Like, what do you want me to say? Whoa, those is? are not the same thing. Those are not... Those are two they different things. They can be close. Be, am I abrasive? Yes. Am I abusive? Mm, I don't think so, unless, like, insulting someone is automatically abusive. I wouldn't say so. I think you're. Yeah. I don't think that you are. Uh, I. I. I wouldn't call you abusive. I, I saw, do insult people. Like I definitely I do some that. Of the flack, yeah. I saw some of the flack you were getting, and some of the the responses were just sort of like, "Uh, you're not going to further any causes by the way you act." Right. And you were getting really mad. At, like, do you think yeah. it's? Do you think it's like? annoying that people expect you to be fighting for a cause with everything you say a little a little yeah a little because I, I i always feel a little like like if it, if i if like there's like a watch on your back like if you're gonna be progressive you better be progressive in exactly the right way otherwise we're gonna shit on you it, as well it was like, it was i was getting a little annoyed because yeah the feeling i was getting was like ben we we you you know we share these like we share these ideas we share goals politically culturally whatever and what i want is to see you pursuing those things optimally and the way you are comporting yourself is not optimized and i'm like you might be right well i mean it's I kind of also I, I'm like not, no I'm not, shit. I'm not going to like who do I'm you not know going to behave up literally who, who do you who, know that yeah, behaves who, who optimally? can be optimal who can behave optimally all the time? Is in in any given situation, may, would I maybe get better results from being like, hey, I see that you said this weird thing. You said something about the Jews that I don't agree with, and I have some historical like references that you might want to read that might disprove some of your hypotheses. Like, let me go through them one by one and point. Maybe that would be more effective than saying like, 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 fuck off, Nazi, right? Maybe that's more effective. But I'm not gonna do that. I can't do that. Where do I get the most bang for my buck from? And, you know, this is in terms of both impact on the water, broader world at large and also, like, how does it affect me? How taxing and painful right. is it for me to go through? Exactly. You that's, know? that's the part. It's like being being polite is 
like it takes effort. It takes like if you are not. I think yeah. there are people out there who just naturally and I, and are. I, for, frankly, I have a low capacity for it. I right. really do. I mean, there, there are people out there who have who really are good at being polite and understanding and. Like, it's just the way they were raised. You know, it's just they, they, they came up with that. And, like, for me, it's it's not that I don't want to be polite and understanding. It's just really hard, you know? And it's, like, <clears throat> I, I, I think as long as – I mean, in my mind, it's, like, as long as I'm trying my best to not be, like, deliberately an asshole, then I feel like I'm – like, I'm not going to overextend myself – to the to the like furthest extent I can to be the nicest I possibly can, especially to people who are being mean to me. It's like if you are being mean to me, I'm going to feel you know like hey you re- you really need to know like I guess it's it's kind of like if somebody was bumping into you constantly and you kept saying stop or like could you move away and they weren't doing anything at some point you just have to fucking jam your elbow into them and just be like get the fuck away from me you know so mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. if if you want to live in this world you have to be somebody who can eventually just say like hey your existence threatens me and I'm going to do something about it you know my yeah my my last argument on the way about the way I comport myself on Twitter is there are now I might be, I'm, I will admit that maybe I am inclined to take this approach maybe slightly more often than it is strictly necessary, right? I'll grant that. Mm-hmm. But there are some things, there are some ideas, there are some opinions, there are some things that people can say that I believe are so, are so despicable and so wrong that to, that to try and, like, respond to them thoughtfully and to, to try and, like, answer them and rebut them yeah. is like doing them too much credit. I mean, it's, it's, and it's sort mo- of like... And, and, and a more... Wait, let me finish. And a more yeah. appropriate response... And in, in some of those cases, <laughs> I think a more appropriate response is not to even do so at all, but just to say, like, I have nothing but contempt for this. Yeah. I will not answer this. I, mean, I, I will simply express my disgust. You're sort of and that's attacking all that them is required. at the root. Because it's like, you could attack yeah. what they're saying, but, like, what they're saying... Like in order to express how wrong it is, you would have to peel back so many layers of the wrongness. It's like this is yes. this is not even from a perspective yes. capable of expressing something correct because it is so wrong. And so, like at that level, it's like <clears throat> my inclination would be more likely to just ignore it. Like even if I thought, even if I did have like <laughs> a visceral reaction of hatred towards something I read. My reaction is like I don't want to get involved. I don't want drama. When, I don't want to. I don't want to get into. I don't want to get into an argument. But I do understand why. Like if you have that reaction and you say something, like again, even if in the short term it doesn't seem to have quote unquote an effect, like when you let people know that you have a problem with them, then they are going to yeah. have to think about the fact that they're going to, have to think about that fact. And granted. I think that when you are super aggressive, it is more likely that the conclusion they'll come to is, well, fuck you even harder than, sure. but like, I don't think that, sure. I don't think it's a bad thing to put it in people's head that people have a problem with them, you know, like, yeah, that's the, that is step one towards to, to a, changing your behavior, yeah. you know, to, to us, to, I, I think, I think that just like putting up any I feel like the word resistance kind of aggrandizes just being a shit, be like being shitty, being mean, insulting someone online. Yeah. But like putting up any kind of resistance at all to something that you think is bad and needs to change is like, well, it's not, it's not, is it optimal? Who knows? But I do think it's right to do that. And I don't ever feel bad. I almost never feel bad about it unless I decide like, oh, I read this wrong yeah. or like I misinterpreted well, what I mean, was being Worst said case scenario, you change it back. Like, I think, I think one of the biggest problems facing our like generation and, and the, 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 one of the things caused by the anxiety we all feel is like, we're so afraid of doing it wrong, of like hurting somebody's feelings mm. and then not knowing how to deal with it afterwards. And it's like the best way to deal with it is like, if you were wrong, admit it as fast as possible and Mm. make things right you know just be like oh i'm sorry i was wrong like i've changed my mind i understand that i that you that you were not saying what i thought you were saying we're cool now you know like it's just Mm -hmm. like adaptability is the way to navigate conversation you know yeah although I'm usually not that interested in a conversation. I'm yeah. usually just interested in expressing a, an idea or a feeling and then, right. like, leaving. I mean, uh, I think that you're I, – I guess what I'm saying is that from the perspective of other people 
analyzing your actions, it's kind of like they look at it as, oh, well, I wouldn't do this because I wouldn't want mm. to face the social ramifications of this. Um, so, like, so, Ben, you need to stop because, like, they assume you wouldn't either. Mm, yeah, I don't want to... F- I don't want to f- face the social ramifications of this, so I should become the social ramifications. Right, exactly. <laughs> that is literally exactly. That's what, dude. People, people, bit. fucking be, be like that though, these... and and we do it to ourselves too. Where like, I don't want to be too mean to these guys because <laughs> I know that like in a way they have the, their hearts in the right place. Yeah. But I, whatever. I do think it was dumb. The whole the whole discussion was stupid. It's it's like I I think that uh that you know we we can get into a. Shit, I forgot what I was going to say. I heard a weird noise and it distracted me. Let's play the next fucking speak pipe. Yeah, yeah, we're ready. Uh, next one is Pancakes, Confederate Lost Cause Movement. Three, two, one, go. Hi, Pancakes here. Listen, you don't have to play this voicemail. I'm just here to well, tell you something late. that you might be interested in. You know, with all the tearing the down statues and stuff, I feel like you might look at the lost cause of the confederacy it's uh it's holy fuck this is weird i don't care interesting and fucking no it's not it's not Uh, to understand like what are some long lasting impacts they're the ones that uh just pivoted the issue that civil war is not based on slavery but based on states rights check it out Uh, he's is that it did you ever hear a video game what the fuck what the fuck was the point of this like Yes, I know. I know that they. Okay. Dude, you ever heard did, of Reddit.com? Did you? I know you were talking over a little bit, so maybe I missed something, but I don't think I did. No. Was the point of this just to say that the South claimed that the, it was about states' rights? He, yes, I know. He just said and to, yes, I know that the conf, that the Confederate flag was known for uh, for a while as a symbol of lost causes because that's what it is, and it was you know yeah. now it's racist or whatever. Um, do you, what, did you know that it's did, and and I also happen to know that what is considered today to be the Confederate flag was n- is not the flag of the Confederacy. It was a battle flag of a re- I, regiment in Virginia. I mean, it just seemed like uh, he was saying, so "Just so look forth. into this thing. It's interesting." S- which uh, S- fuck you, pancakes. Uh, well, he's got get an, the fuck he's got another out of one. here. It's food for thought. Oh God! All right, this better be good if you want to redeem yourself. Okay, three, two, one, go. Hi, pancakes here. Listen, Jesus. you know how most people are vegetarians because of the moral implication of killing a sentient being for its flesh? What happens if we reach into the future where we no longer grow animals, but like use their DNA to just grow the meat itself without a sentient being being involved? Then for people like Tom or something, would you be more inclined to Tom's eat not meat? a vegetarian anymore. Is he? No, he's not. But I mean, obviously, his answer to that question would be yes. Like, uh, ob- absolutely. Obviously, obviously, anyone who does it for ethical reasons would be like, "Oh, well, there's no ethical problem with right. this food. I guess I'll eat it." Unless yeah. their in- problem was in like environmental concerns, and then it's yeah. like, "Oh, well, what's the impact of this genetic farming? Are they exactly. creating more fossil fuel?" Okay, easy, easy question, easy answer. Pancakes never fucking darken yeah. my doorstep <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> that food for thought had like zero calories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Burn owned. Oh, shit. All right. Well, next uh, is John YouTube. John YouTube, love you, man. Can't. Thanks for all the <gasps> shit you've been doing for our channel recently. Really appreciate all the work you put in, helping us out. Three, two, one, go. Hello, PCP. My name is John YouTube. I'm the one who yeah. deleted your videos. Oh. Yeah, I can yeah, restore them, there. but I have three demands that must be met. No. One, you must vow to never have Mother's Basement on the podcast ever again. Can't, I, I can't make any promises. <laughs> I can't. One, I can't. Number two, <laughs> Ben Saint must endorse Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. <laughs> for President of the United States. <laughs> is that really Third, his full name? It is. Nate it is. Bestman must complete imposed best and may ever goes in the shell if these Never demands happened. aren't met in the next 13 days <laughs> i'll terminate all your channels damn that's mean though john youtube yeah uh, we just make a twitch fuck you don't do it don't do it <laughs> don't do it youtube i just i want I want the Animorphs lecture back with all the views and comments. That's what I want. It had like a hundred, had like two hundred thousand views. I just want those fucking views back. I want all the dog. funny fucking give me the give things. me it. What was that one with the? I want all the, the streams back, dude. The the gif 
thing, the GIF button. That was cool. Remember that? The GIF button? The GIF button discussion that I filmed where Tom, Tom oh, was the champion. Tom, yeah. The, yes. That's lost. Yeah, the cringe trial? Cringe trial, right? Yeah. Ah, that was good times, man. Uh, if only we could revisit them on some sort of platform for, for yeah. hosting video media. Uh, but unfortunately, no such platform exists because the only things I know about are fucking demons who <laughs> just fucking kill channels and destroy content and ruin lives for no reason. Yeah, it's a real bummer, and I don't know why it has to be like this. But uh, it's the hell it is. We so live in. <laughs> let's 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 just not never give it give it any more thought. Yeah. Uh, next one is give me the Buster Cast. Three, two, one, go. Bam, Tom. I no, just watched yeah. Gunbuster and Die Buster for the first time, and I need your Buster cast. Please release it again. Who cares about the PCP? Give me that <laughs> fucking <laughs> podcast. Thank yeah. you. I, I wait. What happened to the Buster I, cast? It was destroyed, I don't, wasn't it? What was it? Dis- was it? I'm not was actually it not, sure. Was it not caught in the blast radius? Um, I I don't know. Um. Was, wait, that was post... No, that was post-Radcon, right? So yeah, it, it would have been destroyed. Um, yeah. So, it'll be back when YouTube... Do, have I complained about how YouTube just keeps telling us they're going to fix it and not doing it? Have I said that yet this episode? Because uh, it really bears repeating. Not as explicitly as just now, but I'm glad. They you... just keep... Like, Nate, Nate keeps... E- like, for the last, like, week or two, Nate keeps emailing them... And they keep saying, like, hi, hi, Nate, this is Greg filling in for my yeah. colleague, George. Thank you for your patience on this matter. Due to the situation around surrounding COVID-19, our staff is limited. Oh, and boy. so our backlog is blah, 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 blah. We appreciate your patience, and we will be letting you know when there are developments on your case. Thank you for reaching out. Appreciate your patience. Love I you. Like how, Goodbye. I like how the, the mwah, mwah, mwah. disease that causes everybody to have to be in their houses is somehow causing this internet-based company to do less work. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Hey. They I, can't work from there's home, literally, I guess. There's literally no work involved. One person just needs to fucking hit some buttons yep. to say undelete the content. Like, just fucking undelete Maybe their like, employees have gone from one to zero, and it's all robots now. Like, it's really frustrating. I feel, I feel like they wouldn't lie. Like, it's not that I think they're honest, but I don't see what they gain by telling us be patient. I think they're just disorganized as fuck. If they're not going to do it. So I feel like at some level, they do intend to do it. Yeah. But will they ever? That's the question. Is a totally different question. Three months at least, I'm thinking. <sighs> and then they're going to bring back like Three half months. of the videos and we have to do it again. Three right, months well, of let's... winter COVID <clears throat> and awesome quarantine. Let's cheer ourselves <laughs> up with this thank you message. Hey, love it. Three, two, one, go. PCP, I just want to thank y'all. Today, it's July 12th, 2020. And one year ago, episode 167, Spiritual Bathroom Dimensions. My first (sighs) voicemail ever. Just wanted to say thanks. That's all. Bye. Okay. You've had a long and storied was, career. Was he here celebrating on the, the one year anniversary of his own first voicemail? I guess he is. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 we, you're welcome. Um, you're welcome. And uh, have we really been doing voicemails for a year? Jesus. Where does the time go? Ah! Down my life! Train. Where's it gone? It's unraveling! The printer is, uh, appears to have been activated. Uh, is May printing something? I guess. I don't. It's just. It's printing and nothing's the PCP coming episodes. out of it. It's just making sounds. It's horrifying. That's okay. You know stop. what? That's gonna. Uh, this one is a. This one's gonna. Let's YouTube listen to the video again. Is this just let's, gonna be the same one? Let's listen one? to it. Wait, is it the same no, one? No, this one links to. No, no. Please stop supporting best guy ever in the procrastinators from Sl- oh, from Slipe for be... Sean. Wait. Okay. Slipe Sean. Uh. Well, let's listen to the voicemail and maybe react okay, to this. Okay, yeah, this is this is a parody. This is a this is a parody of uh yeah. that's cool. Of the dank wizard. Okay. Um yeah. 
let's listen to the voicemail. Three, two, one, go. Hey, listen. Disregard the past voicemails about a dank wizard and from me and just play this one instead. It's a link okay. to the video we, I just uploaded. Ha ha. We will. Ha ha. Okay, so he made it. This is like we, four and a half minutes long, though. I... I... Yes? I, I'm not gonna... We're not gonna watch this right now, right. are we? No, we could just put it in the show notes. And... We will put it in the show notes okay. to check out. Please, guys, we highly recommend... Please stop supporting Best Guy Ever and the Procrastinators. I like quality content. I like this first frame. I could put that in the show notes. Uh, if you fast forward, you see that there's a lot more of it. <laughs> oh, God. He's too close. Okay. Uh, shit, dudes. Uh, we made it to the end. I think Amazing. that's the last one, right? Amazing. Amazing. I'm hungry. We... I'm fucking delirious. I'm I gotta go, go mix up another another mint uh, knife, a makito yado. <coughs> Actually, I'm gonna go hang out with Kazzy and Munchie. I think after Sick. this is done. Sick. Sick. Um. So, anything? Any last 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 note for me? I mentioned it earlier. Uh, Vapors Two is like basically done. I've been procrastinating on uh, that's my name that's our name on like actually like like finalizing it and like sending it off to the printer but i have everything i have all the chapters oh you got I have all, all the content the, the vaporettes yeah yeah they're all in Whoa, it's ready it's like basically God. ready i'm gonna fucking send it off and get it printed like probably like today or tomorrow God, i can't Ooh. believe i'm Maybe gonna tomorrow. get a gift in the mail you are will receive you will receive one envelope containing content. Well, now it's going to be my um, turn. I have to f- do my physical media preparation. Physical media, baby. That's the wave of the future. <laughs> Did we mention um, the the merch? Uh, P- the Radcon Four merch is basically out. Everyone seems to be getting their yes. packages now. Um, May just got his, uh, so there. Everybody's got it. Um. I, I'm 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 opening up the internet to find okay, so become a patron at patreon.com slash the procrastinators for all our fucking bonus content. Shit tons of it. Keep you occupied for a year. Put it on just put it on you you you're a you're a hard working single dad and you need some time to yourself to decompress. Just drink it just have a have a sip have a sip of old timey brandy. In front, in your do in your have, office chair, do we have smoking your any cigar. Any evidence that anyone in our audience has children? And if you want the ultimate, you want to, you know, how can I get these fucking kids off my back for a, a goddamn minute? Just put on the Procrastinators Podcast <laughs> bonus episode playlist and just put it on repeat, <laughs> and you will never, and you will never and hear from nev- them again. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> they will run away. You'll never have, you will never have to work another day in your life. Um, send us a voicemail at uh, uh fuck speakpipe. the voicemail link speakpipe.com slash p no speakpipe.com slash pcp voicemail is the uh, oh, yes. is the link there uh, if you want to fucking have us read your stupid boring no thesis statement message on our on our show uh, thanks for that mm-hmm. um, anything else anything else you want to say before we we leave off for today. Uh... Uh, subscribe, subscribe, like, comment, subscribe, nah, smash don't the button. Subscribe because the, the, don't support the, the channel. Ben is Antifa. Uh, uh, <laughs> the what channel are we even will... actually releasing this on? Actually, are we still just on like... iTunes and and we have been things. releasing them on like iTunes and Podcasting. on our web and on and on the procrastinatorspodcast dot com, the website, and on Spotify. I share think, the and fucking on Google Play. share the podcast, people. Yeah, so we... share the podcast on these alternate platforms. Yeah. I guess, like, I don't know. Maybe there's an untapped market of people who might be listening if they knew that you could get it on fucking yeah. Spotify. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but uh, pretty cool. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Two hours, pretty good. That's content, right? That's that's you getting your money. Uh, we'll we'll keep we'll catch you next time. Uh, peace out. Bye. Good night.